a 25-year skid to the Huskers. Tonight from Columbia, Missouri, college football on TBS Superstation, part of Big PlayStation Saturday, kicks off now. There goes Robertson. Touchdown, Kansas State. At the five, he's in. Touchdown! Nebraska is back. The defense, the black shirts, they've been blacking out opponents. The men in black of Missouri, their man is Brad Smith. Can he control these Cornhuskers? Nebraska, Missouri, four quarters of football, next. Anticipated Big 12 North Showdown as a sellout crowd of over 68,000 on hand at Perot Field in Columbia, Missouri, to see if the Tigers can snap a 24 game losing streak to undefeated and 10th ranked Nebraska. Where were you, my friends, in 1978? That's the last time Missouri beat the Huskers. Here's a couple of reminders. Stamps were only 13 cents. You could get gas for 77 cents a gallon. Alabama won the national championship, and no current Missouri player was even born in 1978. Hello again, everybody. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Thula. Now, the coaches tell us that the past is irrelevant to what happens in tonight's game, but try telling Missouri fans <laughs> that. Bottom line, the Tigers have to try to break the string with an offense that's not running on all cylinders against the country's top-ranked defense. And that's a surprise, isn't mm -hmm. it? Because Missouri returned 10 starters on offense this year, but they haven't meshed the way that they've wanted. But they've had an off week to get ready for Nebraska, and the key is still their quarterback, Brad Smith. Preseason all Big 12. He showed a remarkable amount of talent last year as a freshman. The numbers look good, except for the Kansas game. That's what they're trying to correct this week. And Brad Smith will get more free reign this week with play calling, trying to get him downfield and use his legs a little bit more to get into the secondary. Well, let's talk about that Nebraska defense. The black shirts are back, my friends, courtesy of new defensive coordinator Bo Pelini, who has his team punishing opponents. Yes, and it all started the minute he stepped mm -hmm. foot on campus from the NFL. He came from the Green Bay Packers. He said, everything begins with effort. We start and finish every single drill, and we do it right, and it's non-negotiable. That's why Nebraska is number one in the nation in total defense, because they get 11 hats to the ball on almost every play. Tonight, Brad Smith has to be careful. Those guys must protect the ball and make a few dynamic plays. Ah, but will the string be broken? Let's turn to our Saturday Swami, Craig Sager, for some results. Sags. 1978, Nebraska, kings for a quarter of a century. Missouri focused with the strength, good fortune, to confront a tower of black shirts with a rising star quarterback who's a magician with the ball, a bright future, to reverse the judgment of 24 years and shock the football world. It's in the cards. Missouri wins. Thank you, Craig Cleo. <laughs> One more little note. In 1978, Ernie Johnson was working at a radio station in Athens, Georgia, and Brian Bosworth was in junior high saying, One day I'm going to go from wondering how to knowing how at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Kia Motors, seven cars, one belief. Kia make every mile count. PlayStation 2 and Chili's, spicy, boneless, cool Chili's, boneless buffalo wings. 68,349 expected to be on hand. Standing room only crowd as the Missouri Tigers, who have lost 20 straight to a ranked opponent, try to break a number of streaks tonight. Craig Sager standing by with Missouri head coach Gary Pinkel. Well, Coach, you've mastered the game plan on paper. Visualize it in your head. What can we expect from the Tigers tonight? Well, it's going to be a real physical game. That's just the way they play, and we're going to have to match that. And we're going to have to make plays. And I think our players know that. They're excited about it. It's a great opportunity. We talk about the streak. Did you tell your team the time is now to end it? Well, that's something that we talked about a little bit. But, uh, again, we're dealing with right now, and we're not, we're not have to carry the past. Uh, we understand that, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. All right, thanks a lot, Brad. All right, thanks very much. Gary Pinkle in his third year has done a great job as we look at Frank Solich in his sixth year as the head coach at the University of Nebraska, played for Bob Devaney. He won in Oklahoma State versus Oklahoma State the first game of the year. That was his 50th win as Nebraska head coach. He did it in the same amount of time as Tom Osborne. And the series history, it's been 30 years since they've won here in Missouri, meaning the Tigers, but the Cornhuskers lead the overall series courtesy of that 24-game win streak dating back to 1978. 
Well, the weather might be just a tad iffy tonight. We've been watching some thunderstorms just to the west of Columbia, Missouri, but right now it is perfect conditions. 70 degrees, humidity 18%, and we've got a 50-50 chance of some precipitation. It's expected to be light if we do get any. Now the crowd's been anticipating this game for a couple of weeks now because obviously Missouri had the week off after losing to Kansas a couple of weeks ago a fumbling loss to the Jayhawks 35 14 can they be too emotional at the start of this game of course because they've had two weeks to get ready but I think that Gary Pinkle has struck the perfect chord for his team the right tone that he set for them is we're not dealing with the past we're not worrying about 24 years we're just getting better and taking one game at a time. And let's take, take what is right now in front of us, which is Nebraska. Now Missouri won the toss. They deferred. This is going to be Josh Davis at the one. Crosses the 20, up to the 25-yard line, up to the 27-yard line. Nebraska's first possession will get underway there. The Nebraska offense has not really clicked on all cylinders either, but they were led by Jamal Lord, the senior from Bayonne, New Jersey. Now, his offensive yards last year were better than Eric Crouch's Heisman season, but he still gets criticized. Of course, because the team was 7-7. Seven and seven. As a quarterback, the only numbers you really are concerned with are wins and losses. If he had the same type of years as Eric Crouch with 10-2 and two records, 11-1 records, Jamal Lord would have been a Heisman Trophy candidate. They have the new offensive coordinator in Barney Cotton, but it's pretty much the same Nebraska offense. Davis tries the left side, leans forward up to the 30-yard line. Let's take a look at our U.S. Army starting of one starting lineups and at running back for the Huskers. The man you just saw, Josh Davis, son of tough Tony Davis, the former Husker. This young man had 179 yards rushing versus Penn State. And on the line, a couple of injuries, but Richie Incognito will start at left tackle. Could move over to uh, the center position. This is part of a Nebraska offensive line that is slimmer and quicker this year. Pick up a three by Davis. That's down, second down and seven. Lord changing things up at the line. To the snap. We'll try the option back to Davis. Gets up to the line of scrimmage, maybe picks up one on the play before Jason Simpson comes up to make the stop. Missouri defense, this front seven, will have their hands full tonight. The line, Atia Ellison, he has really flourished since moving from defensive end to the inside. At linebacker, James Kinney, a junior, he averaged better than 12 tackles a game. And in the secondary, he caught an eye on the young man, Nino Williams, a junior college transfer from Oklahoma City. He has become the leader of this defense. Keep an eye out now for number 39, Brian Smith. There he is, the starting defensive end, six and a half sacks on the season. They're going to use him as a third down pass rusher tonight. This is where Missouri's had trouble defensively. Opponents almost 50% on third down. Lord steps up in the pocket. He's dangerous. Crosses the 35 to the 40 to the 45. First down, Nebraska. You know, Charles, we talk about third down, and Gary Pinkle said, I'm concerned about it at 49% for opponents. And this is why he's concerned, because when you do bring pressure, you have to get the quarterback, especially one as elusive as Jamal Lord, who used his legs and just flushed right up the center, because all the pass rush pressure came off of the edges, came right up the middle where the offensive line kept the pocket clean, ran for a first down. One of the top rushing quarterbacks in all of college football. He picked up 13 on that play. First and 10 from the 45-yard line of Nebraska. They go to the option. Well, we have a penalty flag thrown. Direct offense. Five-yard penalty. There's Steve Yuzhev. He's down. the man we're going to be listening to tonight. Frank Solich, though, of course, gave up the play-calling duties. Tom Osborne had him. Bob Devaney had him. And Frank just sort of became the CEO of the team. But he was telling us last night he enjoys it because he can interact with the players even more. And, and he enjoys it because he has a staff around him that allows him to interact with the players and not worry about all the details of the program. Barney Cotton, the new offensive coordinator, has really seized that role and made things a lot easier for Frank Solich. Barney, a former Nebraska lineman for the Cincinnati Bengals in the National Football League, came over from New Mexico. Penalty was against the Huskers, first and 15. Lord keeps it. Streaks to the outside, looking for some running room. Missouri strings it out. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe two. Plus, so he picked up seven on the play. 
Jamal Lord will probably go down, and I'd have to think this is a pretty fair statement, is the most second-guessed quarterback in Nebraska history. Pretty fair statement, do you think? I think it's a very fair statement. Not all of this has been his fault, of course, but a Nebraska team that's 7-7 seven and seven is not something that, that people in Lincoln are ever going to become comfortable with. And anyone who's a bar, part of the Husker Nation, I mean, they can't even fathom 7-7. Seven and seven. That leads you to second-guessing your quarterback. Now the official pickup was eight on the play. Second down, we'll call it seven. Nebraska keeps it on the ground. Davis tries the left side. Nothing doing as that Missouri defense puts the stops on him. Xavier Jackson coming up with the stop. It's his second tackle. Now we're back to third down again, Charles. Yeah, and it's the second time of the night. Here's where Missouri has had problems. Look at the defense right there, last 49%. They already gave up a first down on a third and long on, 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 this, on this drive. Here they come after him again. Once again, you've got to get to Jamal Lord if you're going to bring pressure. Two tight ends for Nebraska. Lord's first pass. Here comes the rush. He evades it. Crosses the 50, looks for the first down, and he'll be about a yard short. First hit was by A.J. Kincaid, the sophomore out of St. Louis. Zach Bill coming up to make the stop with him. Good job by Missouri not only stringing it out, but also containing and hitting it. And this gives them a chance to get off the field as Nebraska's punting unit comes out. Again, Jamal Lord flushes through the middle, gets to the outside, but Zach Bill helps run him down, and A.J. Kincaid, number seven, made the nice hit. They kept Lord about a, a yard shy of getting a second first down for Nebraska. Big series for Missouri. This is a time that Carl Larson may want to fake it early on, maybe keep, keep Nebraska on the up and up, the senior out of Funk, Nebraska. Yeah, Missouri played for it, too. Yeah. Had a punt safe and had a back line just spying on Larson. Well, Larson's had a great year. He's a tremendous young man. Second team, Big 12 last year, just kicks it out of bounds, and Missouri will take over. Craig Sager, the black shirts come on the field. Give us some more info on them. Well, it's time to see the black shirts in action. Back when Bob Devaney took over Nebraska in 1962, he wanted a way to distinguish his first team defense. He told his assistant, Mike Corgan, to go down to the sporting goods store. He came back with 11 black shirts. What started out as a simple purchase is now one of the most proud traditions in all of football. This one belongs to defensive captain, Demorio Wilton. And we asked coach Jimmy Williams about the black shirts. He earned his for two years. He says, once you have it, you keep it. Heaven forbid if somebody beats you out, <laughs> and you must give it up. <laughs> Good stuff, Sakes. Thanks very much. First and ten for Missouri. Smith's first pass of the game. He's going to have to scramble. Throws it out in the flat, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Thompson Oboga. Let's take a look at this Missouri offense led by Brad Smith, the quarterback. Last year's Big 12 Freshman of the Year. He has exceptional ability but there are some that believe he hasn't been throwing the ball as aggressively this year as last year. Yeah, it's amazing. They point at 137 consecutive passes without interception as if that's if it's, as if there's something wrong with that. You know, we always yeah. thought ball security was good, but they do want to see the ball go downfield. The initial play was designed that way, but Nebraska had it covered. Stick on the run. Passes complete over the 35-yard line to Omboga again. The junior out of Grand Prairie, Texas, the leading receiver, picks up 12 on the play. The first play, they tried to get way downfield for Brad Smith. Now he comes out with a boot action. He has Victor Cisse, number 84, short. And in the medium range, Thomas Umboga. Thompson Umboga, number 87, the leading receiver. Excellent catch, first down for Missouri. And the Tigers are getting off to a good start, which they said was crucial tonight. So much for conservative play calling. They wanted to play <laughs> a little play action on first and second down. They're doing just that. They'll make it three in a row on the pass. Pass over the middle. Pass is caught inside the 50 to the 45-yard line. Sean Coffey, the sophomore out of East Cleveland, Ohio, his eighth reception of the year. Chalk up 19 more yards. Sean Coffey is wearing Justin Gage's number, number 12. Justin Gage, a four-year starter here as a quarterback and as a wide receiver, and they're expecting big things out of this sophomore. Coffee about 6'5", 200-plus pounds, runs excellent routes, but amazingly enough, has gone two games this year without catching the ball. That yeah. obviously won't happen tonight. Three plays, three passes for Missouri, and that is aggressive throwing by Smith. First running play, they try the right side, and the Blackshirt defense stacks up Zach Abram, the senior out of Lake uh, St. Louis, Missouri. 
Let's take a look at the rest of that Missouri offense. Zach Abram, the workhorse of this offense. This young man does not go backward. He is an aggressive runner. And on the line, keep an eye on A.J. Ricker making his 40th consecutive start. Now think about it. Since 1997, Charles, only two players have started as center for Missouri. A.J. and Rob Reedy. You got it. And Rob Reedy holds the record, co-holds co -holds the record for most consecutive starts at 42. Three straight drop. Smith throws over the middle. It's going to be picked off by Nebraska. Josh Bullets with his sixth interception of the year. He leads the NCAA in that category, and that was an ill-advised pass, and we've got to push him and shove it on the sidelines. All right, now you ask the question, Missouri fans, are you happy that he's now thrown an interception? Do you think that this shows aggressiveness? I think he used the right words, ill-advised. He's scrambling away. That's one he should have tucked down, tucked and brought down and not thrown it up for grabs. Josh Bullets, his sixth interception of the year, leads the NCAA one in every game thus far. How about the fact that's the first interception thrown by Brad Smith this year? Syracuse, Texas, and Missouri, all with no interceptions coming into this week, all went by the wayside. On the pitch, back to Davis. Able to pick up a couple on the play. You saw the turnover margin chart there. Always going to be the key, a key to any ball game that you play. If you have good ball security and can get takeaways from the other team, that gives you an advantage. And that interception by Bullocks, my understanding now is that Sean Taylor from Miami yeah. has tied him. He had picked off two today, nearly had a third in their big win against Florida State. So they're both tied at six atop the, atop the charts. And Nebraska has taken advantage of the turnover. Turnover. They've turned it into 54 points already this year. Last year they only turned over, took advantage of the turnovers for 48 total points. Zach Villa on the stop. And that's a key for this Nebraska defense. They not only force the turnovers, but the Nebraska offense, yes, it's not rolling over people, but they're doing just enough to take advantage of those turnovers. And if you continue to turn the ball over, a lot of the times you will give the, give your offense good field position. Look at that. Only four, as you mentioned, 48 points last year, 54 thus far this year as Nebraska heads into this drive off of turnovers. Third down and seven for the Huskers. One for two already here early on in the first. Throw it out of the flat, has some running room. LaFleur has a lot of running room. Kiss him goodbye. The sophomore from Omaha, Mark LaFleur, his first touchdown reception of the year. And for Jamal Lord, his third throw in it, and it covers 55. And all it is is simply a wide receiver screen. Look at the block out front. Great block by the lineman. Another one by a wide receiver out, out, out wide also. And LaFleur had an easy alley to get into. His hamstring miseries are obviously over. Oh, yeah. Full striding down the sideline. And the extra point by David Dykes is good. Well, Nebraska not conservative with their play calling. Jamal Lord can throw that ball. He did. Huskers lead. Welcome back to Big PlayStation Saturday. We're in Columbia, Missouri, where Frank Solich and the Nebraska Cornhuskers have taken the early lead with 8.55 to play in quarter number one. This Missouri defense struggled in pass defense last year because quarterbacks had time to pick them apart. That wasn't so much the case as it was bad tackling on that touchdown pass. It, it was. Nebraska got two blockers out in front of their wide receiver, but Missouri had guys pursuing from inside out, coming from inside towards the line of scrimmage, towards the sideline. They should have been able to get over and make the play, make the tackle, even if they get the first down, at least make Nebraska start another set of downs. Instead, a big play, and Nebraska's on the board early. Sandro DeAngelis will kick it off for Nebraska. Seth Harrell of Tyrone Roberson, I should say, back to receive. DeAngelis drives the kick down to about the five-yard line. Up to about the 27-yard line is Roberson. And Missouri will have their second possession. Let's take a look at that TD pass. All right, take a look. That's Mark LaFleur. He's the wide receiver who's going to make the catch. Here are the two blocks that he's going to get downfield as he runs a little route. Watch as the tape goes. LaFleur just swings out. Easy pass. One block, two blocks. He gets into the alley, and you see the safety coming from the backside. Bad angle to the football. Too narrow, too shallow. LaFleur's speed enabled him to beat the, the, the safety getting over. 
Well, they wanted to stay away from any type of big play. Nebraska really isn't that much of a big play team, but it was just uh, you got to wrap guys up. Now Smith will take over. Keeps it. Goes left. Throws deep. Good coverage by Nebraska. We're going to have a penalty flag thrown on the play. There was some pushing and shoving going on. Sean Coffey was the intended receiver, and Pat Ricketts, the senior out of Omaha, was step for step with him, and I don't think Frank Solich liked that call. I don't think he's going to enjoy this call. Away. Pat Ricketts no. had good position, but he got tangled up with Sean Coffey. And when he did, Coffey get, it looks like Coffey's going to get the benefit of the call. Take a look. Watch Coffey number 12 running an out and up. Good job by Ricketts. Didn't bite on it. Now he's going to get tangled on the sideline. Let's see if Coffee, I think this is going to go against Coffee. It was against Coffee. And if Coffee. it does, it's an excellent call because Coffee pushed him from the back. Great position by number 28, Pat Ricketts. Pass interference on the offense. The distance to the goal penalty. Still first down. You know what Pat Ricketts did that made that play work? Mm. Was that when he when he saw the out route, he didn't take his eyes back to the quarterback. He Good took point. his eyes to the receiver, kept them there, and then we saw the receiver make the, the break to go up. He was able to maintain position. Excellent defensive play by number 28. Uh, it's a, he's one of the great stories of Nebraska, the former walk-on of Millard North High School in Omaha. Turned down a scholarship to play in New Mexico State and an appointment to play at West Point. Said, I want to play for the black shirts. Got a black shirt last year and I think that made that young man's career. Good, it did. Good young man. And he had to battle for it again this year because his backup, Lornell McPherson, battled him all through training camp before Pat mm -hmm. Ricketts won. First down in the bundle now for Missouri. Backed up all the way to their 15-yard line. And first and 23, they keep it on the ground. The right side is Avery. Zach Averin, pretty good game. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson on a little wet Miami game. E.J. Yeah, that thing was a little bit soggy, Thu, and uh, Florida State, and what a day they had against Miami. That's picked by Sean Taylor, the Chris Ricks aerial. Chris Ricks threw more ducks today, and Sean Williams, or Sean uh, Taylor, was his, actually his favorite receiver. Wrong uh, team. Little known fact. Back to you, Thu. All right, EJ, Smith on the rollout, complete to the right side to Victor Cisse, the big tight end, and he's able to pick up the first down. Cisse's 11th catch of the year, the junior out of Silver Spring, Maryland. They're rude on the stop. They need to use their tight ends because you look at Cisse and McCoy and also throw Clint Matthews into the picture. They've got good tight ends on this Missouri team. They do, and what they also need is to get their wide receivers downfield to create even more space for, for their tight ends. Their number one receiver, Darius Outlaw, is only averaging six yards a catch. That's unacceptable in their offensive scheme. Well, it is starting to rain here in Columbia, and it's coming down pretty good right about now. Not quite Miami proportion. And Tallahassee's proportion as they keep it on the ground. Zach Abram wrapped up by Trevor Johnson, the senior out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, Mr. Cornerback Defense Tennessee stud, it's raining. Who does it benefit in this game? Well, it always benefits the offense because they know where they're going as long as the quarterback can throw the ball. This is a zone play, what they call a zone quarterback run play, where you fake it inside or you hand it inside to the fullback based on whether defensive end crashes or not. On that play, because Brad Smith handed it inside, I think that it was a run all the way to mm -hmm. Zach Abram, not a quarterback zone. Well, the quick pass from Smith completed up to the 45-yard line to Umboga. That's his second reception of the year, or of the uh, of the night, I should say. You go back to the field. I mean, it, the offense always has the advantage. Yeah. And this is, this is field turf, too. It's not grass turf, like it used to grass. be. not grass. It's going to hold up very well. We were on it on Thursday when we came and watched Missouri practice. It was a little wet then. I noticed no one slipping and sliding. It feel that the, 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 the footing should be sure for both teams. Well, they got rid of the famous Missouri grass that had a lot of bare patches, and like a bunch of nine irons were hit on it halfway through the season. Smith, another quick look in, passes complete and drops, incomplete. Sean Coffey had it in his hands for a second, couldn't come up with it. That would have been a real tough catch because Sean Coffey's 6'5", and Brad Smith extended every bit of the 6'5", plus the reach with the arms. Watch as he comes to the inside. See, he's way up high trying to pull that in, in between linebackers. He knows he's going to absorb the hit. Very tough to pull that one down. Brock Harvey set to punt it away for Missouri on fourth down. We'll call it three. This is a part of the game that really hurt him against Kansas. Gave the Jayhawks great field position. Davis is deep. This is a pretty good kick. 
Davis from the four, lost the football. It's still loose. Let's see who's got it. It is Missouri's football. That is only the seventh fumble loss by Nebraska this year. Well, number one, he's fielding it on his five-yard line. Ordinarily, the rule is put your feet on the 10-yard line and don't back up. Then, to, then, then Josh Davis took his eyes off the ball a little bit. Well, I'm not sure he took his eyes off as much as the ball might have been slick due to the rain. Slid right through, and Missouri capitalizes, and now it's called sudden change territory. Can the defense elevate their game and keep Missouri out of the end zone? And right now, nothing less than a touchdown is acceptable for the Missouri offense. This is not a field goal situation. Well, we've got a timeout on the field before that. 6.39 left in the first. Brad Smith and the Missouri Tigers knocking on Bo Pelini's defense. We'll be back to Columbia in a moment. Coming into the game, Missouri had a goal of three takeaways from Nebraska. Chalk up one already as they're knocking on the door, trailing 7 nothing. Is this the time where you have to use Brad Smith's ability on the very first play and not dink around for two or three plays? I, I think you go right after him, and I think you use Brad Smith, who has the ability to throw it or run it, some type of a bootleg or what they call a waggle pass for pulling a guard to protect him getting outside. But I get him on the perimeter with a run pass option on my first play. Missouri's offense is third in the Big 12 in red zone success between, behind the Oklahoma State Cowboys and the Sooners. Smith looking. He's got some running room. Throws incomplete. Ran out of running room. Victor Cisse didn't have a whole lot of space to catch that football. Actually did an excellent job faking, faking the handoff inside to Zach Abram. Throws the Nebraska defense, but the secondary, good job in coverage downfield. Nowhere really to go with the football. I want to see Brad Smith get to the corner and really attack it. Really go after it because he's just dynamite when he gets into oh, the yeah. open field. And I like it because they're giving him the option. It's not just straight drop back all the yeah, time. Yeah, I thought there would be more of a bootleg type option on that play, but you know, they get paid more money to be the offensive coordinator. I just talk about it. <laughs> That's right. Abram and Veyman in the backfield is Abram. Zach looking for the goal line. Touchdown, Missouri. Seventh rushing touchdown of the year. Okay, forget the run pass option. Use number 38 as a sledgehammer. Nice block out front. You see that? Looked like number 52, Tony Palmer. And then Zach Abrams determined running. Carrying two Nebraska tacklers into the end zone. We have a chance for a tie game. And the extra point hooks inside the upright, and it is good. So Zach Abram with the touchdown. That is only the third rushing touchdown given up by the Blackshirt defense this year, and we are tied at seven. Right there, right there, right there. Missouri has lost 45 straight to top 10 teams. Their last victory over a top 10 squad was in 1981 versus Mississippi State. But Zach Abram is tied up with number 10 Nebraska, 7-7. Seven seven. You can see the rain just pelting down on Michael Matheny, the kicker out of Columbia, Missouri, right here in town. And it is really opening up. There's Josh Davis, who just a few moments ago set the new Big 12 career record for a kickoff return yardage. He's now number one, and he is not going to receive it. It's a pooch kick. Another fumble. Another one on the ground. And I think Missouri has it. Give it to the Tigers. Great call by Gary Pinkle and their special teams, special teams coach. Why? Because why do you pooch kick? Because you want to kick it at someone who's not used to handling the football in this kind of weather. Great job right there. That was Jack O'Halloran, who actually is used to it as a wide receiver, but he doesn't catch it very often on kickoff return. He's back there to block. 
Go ahead and aim it at someone who right. doesn't handle it very often. Now the turnover story tilts in the favor of Missouri. Right now we're tied in terms of points off of turnovers. Here's Missouri's chance to forge an advantage. You know, they didn't have good field position against Kansas. They've had great field position tonight. Smith throwing wide open. Pass is complete inside the 20. Down to the 10-yard line, down to the 5-yard line. J.D. McCoy, the big tight end out of Moore, Oklahoma. He's a the guy they're glad to have back. He missed the last ball game with a knee injury. Nice pass into the flat. Watch the missed tackle. Pat Ricketts, number 28, who made such a nice play earlier. McCoy slips in before Bullets runs him out of bounds. Missouri obviously in business, first and goal at the six. You know, talking to the Missouri coaches yesterday, they said they told their players Nebraska had 15 fumbles coming into this game. They didn't lose all of them, but they knew they put the ball on the ground. Abrams, or Damian Nash, I should say, in the lineup. Still on his feet, and he's going to be dropped for a loss back to the 12-yard line. Barrett Rood, the junior out of Lincoln, Nebraska, coming up from that middle linebacker spot to make the stop. One thing you have to keep in mind on, de on offense when you're Missouri is that the black shirts can run. Oh, yeah. You're going to go laterally against them. You need to go laterally for a short time and then make a move up into a gap. Find a hole and move upfield because the farther you go laterally against them, they will run you down. We just saw evidence of that with Damian Nash. Now their mantra is run to the ball and play with effort. Second down and goal back at the 10-yard line. the reverse he's going to pass it outlaw the former quarterback tucks it and decides to run and he's able to get inside the 10 yard line down to about the eight again root on the tackle just think a couple of years ago that number three Darius outlaw the senior out of Powder Springs Georgia was quarterback in the Tigers yeah ordinarily you'll see this type of play out in the open field a little bit more because right now the field's condensed when you're down inside the 20 yard line the back of the end zone actually acts as an extra defender for the defense. They're not going to buy the fake as much as they might out in the open field or create as much open space. So there wasn't much room for Darius Outlaw to operate on that play. Big third down for Missouri. And the numbers on Rudy He's done a great job from the shotgun. Intercepted. Nebraska puts the brakes on Missouri again. Demario Williams, the senior out of Beckville, Texas, was Johnny on the spot. It looked like it was thrown right at him. Well, watch Brad Smith never fakes. You see, did you notice he stayed with Darius Outlaw the whole way in his drop? Never looked to the right. Watch Brad Smith on his drop. When you see him go, his head is all the way to the left. Never looked right at all to try and look off the defender. Demario Williams just followed his eyes the whole way. That led him to the wide receiver and the interception. The black shirts get their second turnover of the night. Now Bullock has an interception. Now Williams has an interception. And Nebraska is just going to keep pounding it straight ahead running. It is David Horn, the sophomore out of St. Louis, Missouri. Spent some time at Coffeyville Community College. Mark that one down, partner. That's a blown opportunity for the Missouri Absolutely. Tigers. Absolutely. And After you can't a turnover, do that. You can't do it. You've got to come out of it with points. You know, when we talk with Dave Christensen, their offensive, li uh, offensive line coach and offensive coordinator, what did he tell us? Mm -hmm. We've got to score when we get inside the red zone. And he said touchdowns, not field goals. Take a look at Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator for Nebraska. Whistle is low, penalty flag is low. Hold everything. Don't run out of juice yet, David. I think Nebraska was moving around a little bit, get a legal procedure against the Huskers. Well, Mr. Juszczyk's going to need to get an umbrella. Yeah, <laughs> Start. Pop it. <laughs> I'm hoping he's not sweating. And, and you know what Mrs. Juszczyk's thinking at home right now? He's going to come home sick tomorrow, want to lay in bed. Yeah, but why is my man out there wearing electrical, electrical, electronic <laughs> equipment in this, yeah. kind of, in this kind of rain? You know, I always told, don't wear that kind of stuff when it's wet. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Now Frank Solich has done a great job this year and it's been publicized a lot about getting rid of some assistants and some retiring and picking up six new assistants. But as Charles, you touched on earlier, they have meshed, especially Barney Cotton, this offensive coordinator. It's been, it's been incredible. You talk with Nebraska observers of the program, they talk about how seamless the transition has been. That's second down and eight. Lord looking for some running room just past the tuck in. Atia Ellison, this junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, comes up with his first stop of the game. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. 
Well, another big third down for the Missouri defense coming up here. They have their pass rush unit into the ball game. That means number 39, Brian Smith, and also probably their, you know, their nickel package, which they can play anyway, because they usually have five defensive backs on the field in their base defense. You see what Nebraska has done on third down. Second and three. You almost want to have Jamal Lord throw the ball rather than have him use his legs to scramble out of the pocket. He's very dangerous when he does that. Second and seven and eight. Third down and eight. Lord, straight drop, pass complete up to the 20-yard line. First down for Matt Harrion. And he makes me look foolish yet again. Jamal Lord in the pocket, using his arm to get the first down. <laughs> That's okay. I couldn't get the, the first down mark right. <laughs> now, Bo Cotton, and this is uh, this is a, one of the receivers that they love going to. And Bo Cotton telling us, you're going to remember this young man's name a couple of years from now. Well, what he also got on that play was great pass protection from his offensive line. By the time Missouri got there, he was able to set up and find Matt Harrion, who is his favorite target, because he can stretch the, a defense right down the middle of the field. Yeah, great speed and great size at 6'5". Go back to the running game, straight up ahead. And it is David Horn again out of Omaha, Nebraska. There's a young man that last year, we had the uh, Nebraska A&M game at College Station, and he ignited the offense in that game. They took, he was outstanding. He was, and they remember, they took the red shirt off of him mm -hmm. almost three quarters of the way through the season because they felt they needed to get their run game kicked into a higher gear. But this fall, Tony Davis, excuse me, Josh Davis came back in great shape and beat him out of the starting eye back spot. David Horn adds a lot of quickness in that backfield. Nice one-two combination with Davis and Horn. A good first down run by Horn. Right. Picks up a first down for the Huskers. Two wide receivers to the right. Peach is the tight end. Wiley in motion. Keep it on the ground. Straight ahead running. Horn dipping and doodling. Gets close to the 40-yard line. Well, the NBA returns to TNT this Thursday at 10 o'clock Eastern time as LeBron James and the Cavs take on Shaq and the new look of Los Angeles Lakers. It's the NBA on TNT. EJ's got a full week, doesn't he? He always has a full week, but if anyone can handle it, it's, the it's EJ. Good first down run for the Huskers. Stay on schedule. It allows the playbook to be open for Barney Cotton, the offensive coordinator. They go straight ahead running. Another first down by the Huskers. David Horn again. Jason Simpson on the stop. And this is a Nebraska team that's about plus nine minutes a game as far as time of possession. And Barney Cotton, you mentioned it before. He wanted the offensive line slimmer and trimmer. Watch these guys. Watch the way that they move the defensive front of Missouri. Nice gash to picked up the linebackers also. They get into the secondary before Jason Simpson has to make the tackle downfield. That's exactly what the Huskers want to see in the run game. When Barty Cotton took Look over, that. the first thing he said, and that's, that's huge, first thing he said is, we're too fat and slow on the offensive line. Yeah, they're 312 now. Imagine what they were last year. <laughs> that's right. Horn trying to find the 50-yard line is able to get to it. Pick up about two on the play. As the rain continues to fall here in Columbia, Paul Phil Pitts on the stop. See, that's more like it for Missouri on first down in the run game with Nebraska. Only picking up two yards, now second and eight. Much more of a long distance mm -hmm. call now for Barney Cotton. Although the way Nebraska's been moving the defense in front of Missouri, I wouldn't be surprised to see him stay with the run here and continue to try and pound it out and pick up a first down on second and third down. And Matt Harry has checked back into the game at tight end as Nebraska sends two wide receivers to the right. Horn will go for the shotgun. They keep it on the ground, and the wall forms for Horn. Close to the first down marker. Might be just a shade short. Atia Ellison coming up to make the stop. Now we've had a pretty good quarter. We've had a couple of turnovers and a couple of touchdowns. First 15 minutes is complete in Columbia, Missouri. And the Tigers snap the 24-game losing skid. They're tied at seven at the end of one. Welcome back to College Football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday. As we get set to start the second quarter, we are tied up at seven with the 10th-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Missouri Tigers, along with Craig Sager and Charles Davis. I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to a sold-out for Field, and it is wet. Nobody is left. As Nebraska now facing third down and two from about the 44-yard line. Coming right at you. 
Lord keeps it, leans forward, but we're not going to count that play. Bring it back. You know, we see a lot of players with gloves on. We saw it in the Miami-Florida State game today. Do gloves really help when it's this wet? I, I can't imagine that they do. Get ball, full start, offense, five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. See Frank Solich in our super shot. Most gloves have what they call a tackified surface on, on the hands part. And in this kind of weather, that's going to get wiped out by the rain. It's just going to make it slicker. So, so a lot of guys keep gloves on linemen. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter because they're not handling the ball. A lot of guys keep them on because that's what they're used to. And so we'll just have to see how it goes. They'll probably be changing gloves as they go along, trying to always have a dry set on. Check that now to third down and seven. Lord will go back to the shotgun. The backs go out. Protection is there. Lord sees an opening using his speed, and he is going to be short of the first down. Ushered out at about the 43-yard line. Ellison again on the tackle. That is his third of the ball game. And he's really pursuing hard from inside. Defensive tackle last year, a defensive end. And they didn't get the production they thought they would get from him. Mm -hmm. So as they moved him inside, he was a lot more comfortable. He's a big yep. guy who takes up space. And this year already, he has a sack. Last year, no sacks at all, rushing from the defensive end position, a primary spot to, to go after the quarterback. And here's Nebraska going for it on fourth and short. Well, this year, they're five of eight on fourth down. If I'm Nebraska, I line up, and I bring my, I bring my fullback, number four, Davies, right there. Let him come up in here and block, and give it to my back. Two tight ends. Horn is behind Navy. We have another penalty flag, some more movement. Nebraska, not that bad of a team as far as penalties, about seven a game. And the ball's being mishandled a few times, too. You notice the last two snaps with Jamal Lord, they've not been taken clean oh. from the center. Dead ball, snap infraction on the offense, five yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Now that changes the strategy. Yeah, now you have to punt the football. And if you're Missouri, you tell your punt returner, put your heels on the 10 and don't back up. And be very careful handling the football. And you see again, notice where the ball is? Popping out, even though the penalty was called. Again, not a clean quarterback center exchange. Jamal Lord's going to have to get together with Josh Sewell over on the sidelines and make sure they get that down. Kyle Larson's first punt was about 22 yards. Marcus James now on the 10. See how he's got his heel, he's back there, he's got his heels right exactly. on the 10. I'm sure his, his, his coach told him, don't back up. The rush was on, Larson gets it away. He's done a great job getting it inside the 20. And he's going to have a beautiful punt that'll be stopped dead at the five yard line. A 43 yard kick for Kyle Larson, the senior out of Funk, Nebraska. That is his 12th inside the 20. Great punt. Four turnovers in an opening quarter, Charles. Yeah, and that's been the story of the ball game. That's led to two points for both teams. There's Josh Bullocks with the first interception of the game. Josh Davis fumbling the punt. James Kinney, number 24, recovering it from Missouri. They scored off of that turnover. And there, Jack O'Halloran fumbling the push kickoff before the interception by Demario Williams when Missouri had tried to take advantage of the fumbled kickoff by Jack O'Halloran. Now Missouri takes over, first to 10 from their own five-yard line. They're trying to get out of this hole, running the football up to the eight-yard line. Abram again. Let's check back into the lineup. You know, we saw Missouri come out in that first series. First three plays were passes. They were running the bootleg. You have a tendency, you didn't get what you want in that first series. Maybe you start pulling it back and becoming more conservative. I know, obviously, where they are has something to do with and that, it. And that's exactly what I was going to say, that that's what's going to happen now. They have to kind of go turtle a little bit. You don't want to turn the ball over deep in your territory. Worst case scenario, punt it out and let your defense play again. But if anything, Nebraska has an advantage in terms of field position. They can force a three and out here. Smith looking for some running room. He is dangerous as he gets up to the 13-yard line. Demorio Williams coming up to make the stop. Yeah, I don't think that Missouri needs to, to, to all of a sudden go into a shell out in the open field, Ron. I think that right now you've got to be very careful. Here they get put in the hands of their best playmaker. Nice block knocking off Patrick Cabongo's helmet, number 94 for Nebraska. But look at the pursuit by the black shirts. Bernard Thomas, number five from the back. Demario Williams, number seven over the top. And that guy there, number seven, that you saw on the screen before yeah. Cabongo went off, he's playing as well as any linebacker in the country as we speak. And third down, boy, you can hear the pass pop 
coming up here, leaning up to the 15-yard line at Smith. He's got the first down. T.J. Hollowell came up to make the stop. And I'll bet you that Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. told his offensive line when they went out for this series, you know something, guys? We have to find a way. And there's Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator. We have to find a way to run the football when they know we're going to run the football. I don't care if there are eight or nine guys in the box. We've got to find a way to make some first downs and at least help field position to give our defense a chance if they have to go back on the field. The bottom line is this offensive line very disappointed with their play last week or two weeks ago against Kansas, and they were challenged this week. Keeping it on the ground. The hole is there. Another first down for the Tigers. Zach Abron. Maybe in Washington finally tripping him up, and not before he gets the first and then some. Look at how the offensive line blocks this play. And what they do is they block it, everything going this way, and the running back cuts back that way on the handoff. Kind of bringing it back against the grain. See how they move the line to your left? Bringing it back across the face of the face of the, off the defensive line. Nice run from Missouri, first down. Against Illinois and Kansas this year. The two big teams from the superpowers, they only averaged about 210 yards and 18 points. They need to do better of that. Smith has time being rushed. He'll just throw it away. Pass will go incomplete. He was outside of the tackle. Barrett Rude is the one who was putting the quarterback pressure on Smith. Does, does Smith have a tendency to overanalyze? Last year they kept it fairly simple for him, but they gave him more responsibility this year. Well, again, we saw at the, at the top of the game, 137 consecutive passes without an interception. But all he's heard for the last two or three weeks is, we don't take enough chances. It's been in the media, it's been on talk radio, it's been everywhere. I think that might have had something to do with a couple of those forced passes early in the ball game. That last pass, much more indicative of how Brad Smith takes care of the football. Two-step drop, a little look in is good to Thompson Omoga again. His third reception, that could be another first down. That he may be a tad short. Nope, they're saying it is first down. And now I think that Brad Smith, who has always been a cool customer, has calmed down a little bit. Because you can't you can't avoid the hype. 24 straight years without being Nebraska. We have a chance to knock up the number one defense in the country. He might have been a little tight at the start. I think he's settling in pretty well now. Nebraska rushes four. Missouri keeps it on the ground, trying the right side, maybe picking up three on the play. Zach Abram again. Let me go back to a point I made at the start of this drive. Even if Missouri doesn't get another first down now and has to punt the football and they're successful in being able to punt it, don't get it blocked, all of that, they have changed field position already. Look at where we are with the ball now. Started deep in their own territory. They're second now and second and seven now in their own 41. Even if you punt it, now Nebraska has to go the long way as opposed to getting it on this side of the turn, on your side of the uh, 50. Right, second down and seven. Another first down for Missouri. I tell you, Brad Smith can really motor it. You know, Nebraska's only given up about 73 yards running the football, and right now, Missouri is closing in on that mark. Well, what's nice about it, this is the zone play. Fake it inside to the fullback when the defensive end crashes, get into the secondary. And what was great about that play is Brad Smith made the read and was very definite in his move into the secondary. No hesitation, no extra wiggle, made the fake, boom, into the second and third level of the Nebraska defense. Well, we have Lornell McPherson coming off a little sh shaken up on the play, and there's Bo Pelini, who's done such an outstanding job. Came from the NFL, where he was a linebacker's coach. Came in with a whole new attitude and said, listen, we're going to get slimmer, we're going to get tougher, we're going to get more physical, we're going to run to the football, we're going to take people's heads off, and the players have really taken to it. And I don't care what was asked of you before, whatever I ask of you, you're just going to do, and if you don't, there's the door. And it was very simple, and the guys bought into it, and they played well since he's gotten on campus. Another first and ten for Missouri. Nice offensive set. That's a lateral. Looking for another pass. Outlaw is going to throw it back. Oh, they've got a big wall. Smith, touchdown, Tigers.
conservative. It's right here. This is called everything out of the playbook. Remember, we saw earlier in the ball game, we look at Dave Christensen again, the offensive coordinator. What did we see earlier? The reverse pass with, uh, with Outlaw. Remember what I said? Out in the field, you have more space, don't you? And look at that. And look at the wall of black, black shirted blockers getting out in front and creating space for Brad Smith. And the extra point is good. Outlaw to Smith. The Tigers have taken the lead. People will have a nine play 95 yard drive on this Nebraska defense, but the Missouri Tigers have done it and they've taken the lead 14 to 7. 10 57 left to play in quarter number two. Davis is back to receive the kick. Let's see if they do the pooch kick again. Yeah. Rain is slack, this is slackened a little bit, but it's still wet out there. Let's see if they try it again. Oh, they dropped it the last time. This time they drill it. It's going to go out. We'll have a penalty flag thrown, and Nebraska will have good field position. I have a feeling Missouri used the speed of Nebraska against them on that touchdown. Great point because it's great to have good pursuit. Watch what Missouri does is they motion to, they have a trips formation. Now watch, watch when we stop it right here. There's three blocks, but watch Nebraska. All the white shirted deep defenders are coming to this side of the field. Here's where Missouri's forming their blocking lane back on the other side of the field. Watch the throwback from Darius Outlaw, as we mentioned before, the former quarterback. He hits Brad Smith. Only one guy has a chance, Pat Ricketts. He's wiped out. Brad Smith steps through the block and goes to the end zone. A 95-yard drive for a touchdown by the Missouri Tigers. Well, it's fired up this crowd of 68,000 plus. The pitch back to Horn. He has some running room, crosses the 40, lowers the head. It's up to about the 48-yard line. Pick up a 13 on the play. Nebraska is not a team to panic, though. No, and, and nor should they. And Ron Brown, their wide receivers coach, does a great job of teaching his receivers to block. Watch out in front of David Horn, which you're going to get downfield. All right? No, right there, number 24, Jack O'Halloran. He had held his block the whole run up until the end, giving David Horn the corner to get to. Straight ahead running, crossing the 50. It is David Horn. Let's check in Studio A with EJ and a little LSU. Ernie. Yeah, Ron, a couple of SEC teams ranked in the top 10 lost for the first time today. LSU beaten at home by Florida. That's Chris Leak, the theatric phase on 19 to 7. The Gators over LSU and unbeaten Arkansas lost at home to Auburn. Cadillac Williams 150 yards. That's the game's only touchdown. Auburn over Arkansas 10 3. Back to you, Ron. I'm telling you what, it's dangerous being ranked nowadays, isn't it? <laughs> What a crazy season. Lord keeps it, finds a little bit of running room. He's able to get the first down as he is stacked up at about the 42-yard line. I mean, think about it. Uh, you know, here Texas gets whacked today, and you have LSU losing. My goodness gracious, and Houston not losing in Arkansas. It's been a topsy-turvy year already, and there's plenty, plenty left. Plenty of football left. You know, some new people are going to enter the top 25, and, and they're going to be taken down also. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, it's, all, it's almost like some teams can't stand prosperity. If we take a look at Jamal Lord, the quarterback, you talk about being the most second-guest quarterback in Nebraska history. He made more yeah. out of that last run than I thought was there. I That's thought that exactly Missouri right. had a bunch of tacklers around him, and he continued to get downfield into the secondary. Well, Lord, the senior already graduated with a degree in communication. The pitch back to Horn. He is going to be stacked up. That's the Missouri defense that they wanted to see. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of the University of Missouri, a member of the Big 12 Conference. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of the University of Missouri or the Big 12 Conference. You say that so smooth. And, and you know that was in Reader's Digest about a month ago that, disseminated. Yeah, <laughs> I figured what it meant. Word power. Word there's, power. There's James Kinney. <laughs> All right, James Kinney's the leading tackler for Missouri. One thing they need from him: more big plays. He's mm -hmm. given them one already with the, fumble, the recovery on the uh, fumble punt. Loss of one, second down at 11. Lord throws it out on the flat to the floor. He closes in on the 30-yard line. They'll mark it at about the 31-yard line. Nino Williams, the second on the stop. 
Did this play look familiar? Mm -hmm. This is the play that they ran for the touchdown. Very simple. Jamal Lord in, in, in the shotgun. One step, fire it out to LaFleur. There's a great block by Pilkington, number two. Another block by Tim Liley, number 13. We talked about the blocking wide receivers for Nebraska. Evidence of it on that play led to, led to third and very short. Quarterback sneak or give it to your eye back here. Yeah, you've got the Hosses up front to do it on third down and about a foot. Rewalled in motion, an extra blocker. They give it to the eye back, and it's a first down for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. David Horn just lowering the head. This is a Nebraska offense when Barney Cotton took over, said, I want to be a little more balanced. They haven't gotten the balance they've wanted this year, but I think what they're getting now is a little improvement, and Barney Cotton would probably take that. What he's learned is that, you know, he said Barney Cotton's formula was throw the ball 35% of the time, quarterback 55%, completion percentage, all those things. He's not worried about that anymore. He's worried about winning ball games and playing to the strengths of the players that he has. Look at the ratings there, rushing number six in the country. A little pitch out to Horn. He crosses the 30, gets away from one tackler inside the 20-yard line. David Horn, the sophomore out of Omaha. He's a young man at the end of last year. He was probably 180 and change running the football, and they were questioning his durability. He knew he had to bulk up. Well, if you play at Nebraska, you're going to bulk up because they have one of the best strength and conditioning programs in the country, now led by Brian Bailey. And he's getting a lot of credit from players past and present about Nebraska's oh, yeah. conditioning this year and how well they've started this season. Second down and short, especially in the fourth quarter for this Nebraska team. Wiley in motion. Keep it on the ground. Horn first down, closes towards the 12-yard line. This is a classic methodical drive by Nebraska. And, and it points out the, the, what you said before. No panic on Nebraska's side. They've had a couple of errors along the way, some fumbled kickoffs and punts. They've gotten down on the scoreboard. But again, they just came back out very methodical on offense, handling a wet football very well. And the offensive line chopping big holes in the defensive front of Missouri. So much no longer calling the plays. Yeah, we don't believe he doesn't have input. He's oh, still listening. Yeah. If he wants for something called, he can still make that play. You got that right. First down and 10. You can hear the thumping ball is loose. I think Missouri may have it. I didn't hear a whistle when he went I down. I didn't hear it, and the Tigers do have the football. Third fumble loss for the Huskers in the opening half. But just as I gave credit to Nebraska for handling the football well with these conditions, there's the first hit. There's the second one. And did I say that James Kinney needed to make big plays for this yeah. defense? He caused the fumble. Forced fumble by their best inside linebacker, number 24, Kinney. Great job. Looks like Nino Williams, the second, number 22, with the recovery. He gets his second of the game, as a matter of fact. And you can see the turnover situation. And that is what Gary Pinkle really turned around. It began really last year with that defense. Very opportunistic defense. And they wanted three takeaways. Well, I'll tell you, you got them, guys. Let's, let's see if Missouri's offensive line is going to give Smith time on this play. He's not wasting any time. As a receiver open up to the 30-yard line, it is Darius Outlaw, who already has a touchdown pass thrown, his first since, since 2001. Did someone tell us that Missouri had been conservative in their play calling this year? <laughs> because they sold us a bill of goods, didn't they? Yeah. Dave Christensen again backed up deep in his own territory after the turnover, pushes the ball downfield to Darius Outlaw, who's going to increase his six yards per catch average that he had coming into this ball game. 640 to play in the first half. They go back to the run game. And it is Damian Nash. He crosses the 35-yard line. Now Brad Smith, the sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio, is doing everything tonight. Yeah, forget the two turnovers. He's starting to settle into this game well. Nice strike to Thompson Umboga. And then downfield, as you mentioned everything, there's an interception in the second one to Demario Williams. But now he's starting to get his game back together. The double pass to Darius Outlaw, back to Brad Smith, and he's got himself a convoy into the end zone. He already has more rushing and passing yards than he did against Kansas, and he adds to the rushing total as he gets up above the 40 to the 44-yard line. Give Missouri another first down. And we saw something that Brad Smith did 
on that play that he didn't do last year, and that's no when to be physical and when to hit the deck. And, and you know, they've, they've talked with Brad Smith a tremendous amount about how important he is to this team. And Gary Pinkle, his head coach, has been preaching to him just what you said. No one to slide, no one to be physical. But you know something? I think this whole week, they've just talked about Brad Smith getting into the secondary mm -hmm. and making plays, kind of taking the shackles off of this young man and turning him loose. Smith running the option, keeps it, leans forward to the 45 yard line. Pick up about three on the play. You know, when we had a chance to sit down with Gary Pinkle back, I believe it was July at the Big 12 meetings, you know, we were asking him about, you know, what about his offense? He says, well, bottom line is you got to keep the ball in the hands of Brad Smith, period. And, and when you do, good things happen. Gary Pinkle had a very successful run at Toledo as the head coach there, won some big ball games, beat some BCS conference teams. You remember they went to Penn State one year and uh -huh. beat Joe Pa, and that, that sent shockwaves. Built a great program, and he's well on his way to building an excellent program here at Missouri. Uh, a little bit of jumping on the left side. Now this Nebraska defense, as we mentioned, under Bo Pelini, number one in the country, but let's see what they're doing tonight. And for the year, how about the first half tonight, 148 yards passing. They're only allowing 146 a game for the season. They're already over the total yards tonight, too, Charles. The big one is points. You know, 7.6 for the game, already having given up 14. They knew Missouri was a good ball club, but turnovers have been have played a big part into putting Nebraska de Nebraska's defense back on their heels a little bit. You know, Missouri's had the ball about four less minutes than Nebraska, and they've had two more plays, but they're coming up with that big play when they need it. Yeah, and remember where Missouri's getting the football in some of these situations, too. Up to midfield is Darius Outlaw, who came in with 21 receptions. Lord L. McPherson on the stop. I'll tell you, Outlaw, they were looking for that one receiver to step up. They were hoping it would be Outlaw. They were hoping it would be Sean Coffey, but I think Darius Outlaw's taken up where Justin Gage left off. Well, well, he's had to, you know, because as we mentioned before, six yards a catch mm -hmm. for a guy that talented is not acceptable in their offensive scheme. He's heard all the criticism. He wants to play big when the TV lights come on. And thus far tonight, he's done that. On third and short, Smith keeps it rolls. That play just took a little bit too long. Arnell McPherson is the one who really tied things up for the Nebraska Blackshirts. His second complete. tackle of the night. Now what do you do? Well, I think in this situation you punt the ball away. You're up 14 to seven. I want to play field position here. Good point. You know, I know the Missouri crowd wants him to go for it, but you don't keep playing with fire and field position against a Nebraska team who just had a great drive against your defense. You want them to go the long way, which helps contribute sometimes to turnovers if you have to handle the ball too many times. Rock Harvey at his 37-yard line. Davis back at the eight. And it's a low end-over-end end kick away from Davis. It'll sneak inside the 20-yard line, and that's where Nebraska will take over with 4.06 left in the half. We've got ourselves a ball game. Number 10, Nebraska trailing Missouri. Good decision. Missouri leads Nebraska 14 to 7. The last time the Tigers beat the Cornhuskers, 1978. The coach of Missouri, a former Cornhusker player by the name of Warren Powers, honored tonight along with over 80 of his former players. Actually giving a ride off the field. He's with us now. Hey, Coach, first of all, your thoughts on this game right here, 14-7. Oh, I think it's a great football game you got here. Both teams playing very hard. You can tell by the turnovers. They're forcing a lot. And it, it, it'll go down to the last minute. There's a most big play players on both sides. Coaches always talk about team chemistry, friendships for life, life with some of their players. What did it mean to you to have eight of your players out there tonight and actually have them put you on their shoulders and carry you off? <laughs> well, I didn't want them to drop me one thing, but uh, no, we had a great time. It was a great reunion. You know, that's what this is all about. We haven't been together in 20 years, and these guys loved it. You know, they, they, they played hard for me. We had fun, we had success, and uh, getting back here and having a, this reunion was just tremendous. Uh, they had a great time, and I know I did. Thanks a lot, Coach. Under four powers, they went to five bowl games in seven years, huh? All right, Jamal Lord picks up 19 on the ground, then he hits his tight end, Matt Herrien, with a first down pass. 3.38 to play in the second. 21 yards on the game. If Jamal Lord keeps throwing the football this way. Watch it. This is a waggle pass. Jamal Lord faking one way, coming back. 
you see how he set and then clutched and then gave Matt Herrian time to cross behind the defenders and stuck it in there. That was a good looking pass. Oh, yeah. He's four he keeps four. throwing the ball this way. You may have to revise the book on Nebraska. And if he can continue to throw the ball that well, that just opens up the playbook again for Barney Cotton and the offensive scheme for the Huskers. That's an incomplete pass yet. They keep it on the ground. Absolutely nothing going on there. Is the Missouri defense, which is probably the fastest and most, most athletic lineup since Gary Pinkle has been there, puts the stop on him. Yeah, would they tell us eight guys playing that, that, that started the season as starters on defense that either were new starters or playing a different mm -hmm. position? And they move people around. Too. Oh, they move around like great. Brandon Barnes, number 21, their linebacker, was a free safety last year, and prior to that was a wide receiver. Now he's one of their leading tacklers. Those are in on three minutes, second down and 10. Ward keeps it, leans forward, maybe picks up a couple on the play. Our first and 10 line is brought to you by the Home Depot. Yeah, I think we may have had a timeout call. Well, we've got a player hurt. Well, A.J. Kincaid looks like he Got a little hitch in his get along there. They're going to take a look at him at the far side and they say, let's get this thing going. They're going to keep playing. Kincaid still on the field. Now one the far side official saying, let's wait a minute. We've got a hurt player standing here. Once again, if an update becomes available on AJ Kincaid's condition, we'll pass it along to you. Another third long situation. Pass rushers coming into the game. That means Brian Smith, number 39 for Missouri. We haven't really called his name tonight other than to keep an eye out for him. But this is the situation that they'll need him. There's Calvin Washington, mm -hmm. number 17, who was the starting corner up until this evening when A.J. Kincaid replaced him in the lineup. Washington back on the field now, replacing Kincaid, who just limped off with an injury. Another third down that Missouri needs to find a way to get off the field. Matt Eberflew, their defensive coordinator. Let's see what he has concocted for Barney Cotton's offense. Yeah, Brian Smith, the redshirt freshman out of Denton, Texas. They nicknamed him Slippery because he's slim but slippery. <laughs> They're going to need him now as Lord's got the play. comes in. 240 to play in the half. 18 to snap it. Smith, 35 sacks his senior year in high school. They've had to get at least six yards on third down so far tonight for Nebraska. Two wide receivers to the right. Lord tucks it, keeps it, has running room. Close to the marker, but he's run out of bounds. Great job by Missouri's Jason Simpson. I thought Lord was going to cut it up midfield. It looked like he had a little lane there. Yeah, it, it appeared that way, but I think what he saw was Missouri pursuing from inside out, and all of a sudden there was a wall of tacklers coming towards him, so he bent it back to the sideline. Every time Jamal Lord is flushed today from the pocket, he's been able to do it up the middle. Nice straight arm, but a good job by Jason Simpson, forcing him to the sidelines, and it appears that Nebraska is going to punt the football away and play field position themselves. Well, they had to think about it for a couple of seconds, and Frank Solich really is in charge of the kickoff and punt teams, and they decided to make the decision. Marcus James is back on his 10. If you're Missouri, you've got to play punt safe and watch the fake. Kyle Larson is not going to fake it. Two steps, and he booms this one, kissing goodbye. Well, he already has one inside the 20. Couldn't get that one to drop. Ben with 2.13 left to play in the first half. Nebraska holding on to a touchdown advantage, or Missouri holding on to a touchdown advantage. Julie, until you're free, you're not a superhero. You don't have to be. College football on TBS brought to you by Best Buy. Thousands of possibilities. Get yours. And Chick Quattro, four blades, two conditioning strips for an incredibly close, smooth shave. Two minutes and 13 seconds left to play in this half. Missouri leading Nebraska 14 to 7. Missouri with all three timeouts remaining. Do they play conservative now, Charles? Well, I think that I think that you keep the ball in the hands of Brad Smith, as they just did. Again, a zone running play. Fake it inside to the fullback. Read the defensive end. If he crashes down to the fullback, you keep it and run the football. You know, if you're going to do any type of any type of run pass action, keep it in the hands of number 16 and let him make the decisions. He usually makes good ones because the worst thing you can do is turn the ball over here right before the half and give mm -hmm. Nebraska something cheap 
and change momentum to start the second half. Now you really test that offensive line of Missouri. Say, gentlemen, let's just try to get a first down and go to the locker room. Smith, he's not going to do anything with it, but run. A little bit of an opening leans forward to the 30. He may have the first down. Demorio Williams on the stop. Just a reminder to stick around for our Chili's halftime reporter, Ernie Johnson. Brian Bosworth will catch you up on all of today's action, including the Oklahoma Sooners beating the Texas Longhorns for the fourth consecutive year. How about Miami beating Florida State, LSU losing today, and all the scores from around the country with EJ and Boz. About four or five inches to go. And as we close in on one minute to play in the half, Gary Pinkle squad says, let's just keep the clock running, gentlemen. And, they're come, and it looks like they're going no huddle at this point also. Just coming wide, hoping to catch Nebraska unaware, but the black shirt defense of Nebraska back and set. From the shotgun. Into the flat, incomplete pass. Earlier, we saw A.J. Kincaid get injured. Craig Sager, you have an update on him. They have taken him into the locker room to uh, get a little early work on him here at halftime. Right now, the preliminary report is a possible sprained right knee, but they also have said that it is possible he could return in the second half. Good news. Kincaid, the sophomore out of St. Louis. 59 ticks left here in quarter number two. A lot of turnovers in this football game. Nebraska's lost three fumbles. They've put it on the ground three times. Missouri has thrown a couple of interceptions. Three to snap it. Smith rifles the pass, and that was dangerously close. Darius Outlaw, the intended receiver. T.J. Hollowell was right there on the coverage. That, that's not conservative with this much time left. No, it, 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 you know, we're, when we say conservative, we're thinking of running the football inside and letting the clock tick off. But the passes they're throwing, they're getting downfield about 10 yards or so on the break. It, 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 no, the tough part is you're going to leave time on the clock mm -hmm. if you don't pick up a first down here. I think what they're counting on is that Nebraska is not a known hurry up team, a two minute type of offense. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Not in their history. Smith straight ahead. He's going to be stacked up, see if Nebraska burns a timeout because that'll set up a fourth down situation. I would. They and, do. And, 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 would and try and get my punt return unit on the field and try and get a big return or go for the block here at the end of the first half. 46 seconds left to play in the half, but it's time for the fan rant brought to you by Kia Motors, which reminds you to make every mile count. We've got the Huskers of Nebraska versus the Tigers of Missouri. <laughs> <laughs> That's the haka dance. Beg pardon? That's the haka dance, the native haka. dance of the Maori tribe in New Zealand. And my man was getting them ready here in Missouri for the haka. Now, no one knew what he was talking about. Not a clue. But they did get the idea that he liked Missouri. So I'm giving it to him. Anybody can bring an international flavor to the rant. <laughs> gets my vote now it's better for me when I see food there you go all right you give me food I like the ramp better <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Taz did it well fourth down they're gonna kick it away as the rain starts up again here in Columbia this is off the side of the foot and they have, yeah he has not oh, been consistent boy. all year long Brock no. Harvey after having a sensational year last year and that was a the time they needed a good punt from him and after his first one his last couple have not been very impressive 21 yards on the kick, and Nebraska will have good field position and 40 seconds to work. Now, Gary Pinkle's squad was telling us that they had a great two weeks of practice, probably the best two weeks they've had this year, and it's showing so far in the first 30 minutes of play. And I'm interested to see what Barney Cotton does here in this situation. Ball's on the 50. Nebraska not known as really a straight yeah. drop back throw team, and more play action. And they go back to the screen to the floor. How about four wide receivers set, huh? This is, <laughs> you don't is see it, that with that, Nebraska very often. Is this often. Nebraska? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Are these the Huskers? But even out of the four receiver set, it's still a very safe pass that was called for Jamal Lord. You know, ordinarily you get to the four receiver set, you try and get the ball downfield. Nebraska, again, throwing the ball laterally, hoping to pick up a block, make a juke, and another big play. That was how they scored their first touchdown. 
Final 36 seconds. They empty the backfield out again. Four wide receivers, two to the right, two to the left. Lord, the quick pass, and the communication was a little down. Mark LaFleur was the intended receiver. Lord was hoping he'd go out. I think, uh, frankly, you know what I think happened? He just threw it behind him. <laughs> you, know, I, I, you know, I don't think he Trying was thinking he was going to come my, out. My I, think, I think LaFleur just went inside, and, and Lord just threw it to the outside on, on the slant route. You see how he's done tonight, five of six passing. Those are excellent numbers for Jamal Lord. His first incomplete pass. Three seconds to snap it. They're going to have to hustle. Yep. Lord throws it out in the flat. Little kick play complete to LaFleur. Had some running room. Scampers out of bounds with 27 seconds left to play in the first half. Picks up 10 on the play. This play looks like it should be dead. Watch right here, Diedrich Harrington. He's right up into Isaiah Fluellen, number 28, and you would think that he would go ahead and knock him out, knock him off the ball, but he's not able to. Excellent block downfield by by Nebraska. Fluellen able to spring the floor. I thought that play was dead on the spot, based on the defensive presence of the defensive back. If you're a wide receiver in Nebraska, you better know how to block. And Ron <laughs> Brown, the receivers coach, will not play you. Period. Ron, End of the story. Ron Brown's in such good shape; he could go block oh. all of them right now. Yeah, we'll listen in as a penalty will go against yeah, the Huskers. Uh, false start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. 27 seconds left to play in the first half. Now, this is not your classic two-minute offense uh, going downfield with one minute on the clock, but you know something? They're putting themselves in position to at least have a field goal mm -hmm. attempt at the end of the half. Very safe, short passes, and they're getting nice chunks of yardage when the ball's completed. Clock won't start till the snap. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. The pass complete inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line. Ross Pilkington, the former minor league baseball player, with his first reception of the evening. And they'll go hurry up on this one. Try and get to the line of scrimmage, see if he spikes it here. They have Nebraska enough. with one timeout left. They have time now to call a play if they if they want to. Pick up a 27 on the play. The Lord will just spike it down with 18 seconds left to play in the first half. Three verticals here. Vertical, vertical, and this is where Pilkington goes, and that's where the ball is going to go with Jamal Lord. Watch, everybody just goes upfield. Pilkington getting inside the two defensive backs. Excellent throw by Jamal Lord. Not enough depth by one of the, what they call, outside safeties, mm -hmm. the whip or the rover. Didn't get enough depth on his drop, and Lord tossed it perfectly right over the top in between the two of them. Well, Missouri played a lot of man-to-man -man last year, now playing a little bit more zone, and they just found the zone. Yeah, if I play actually a lot more zone, yeah. I'm playing zone 85 to 90 percent of the time, as opposed to playing man-to-man -man that amount last season. On second down, clock continues to tick. Lord looking, looking, still looking, throwing, had a man open and didn't get it to him. LaFleur was wide open at the five-yard line, and he short-hopped it. And that's where Jamal Lord gets the heavy criticism because it's always a matter of what have you done for me lately. The last pass, he looks so good. Here he has a wide-open receiver that give him great yardage downfield. LaFleur would have been able to catch the ball and get upfield or get out of bounds. Wide open, he flat-out missed it. You know, that's, that's where the Husker fans yeah. have that love, love-hate relationship with oh, yeah. Jamal Lord. Love him when he makes big plays, and then you see a wide open receiver unable to convert. Third down, 11 seconds in the half. Lord looking in the end zone for Pater. A lot of pushing and shoving. No penalty flag is thrown. The intended receiver was LaFleur. Now with seven seconds left, brings up a fourth down, and the Nebraska field goal team will come out. Yeah, nice coverage by Michael Harden, number 26, the corner, trying to throw the fade ball in that situation. And although Nebraska is going to go off the field with a field with a, getting only a field goal attempt, I thought it was an excellent drive led by Jamal Lord to put them in position for David Dyke's attempt. David Dyke still spotted at the 20. It'll be a 30-yard field goal. He's three for five between 30 and 39. Good snap, good hold. And good kick. So the man that had four field goals versus Utah State and Penn State pulls the Huskers 
14 to 10 with two seconds left to play in the half. Well, our next telecast will come your way next Saturday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time as the 24th ranked Oregon State Beavers host the Washington Huskies. We have a Pac-10 battle that'll be coming your way from Corvallis, Oregon. Charles and Sager and Aaron Andrews and I will be there. Aaron will be back with us next week. You can see some pretty good quarterbacks in that football game too, Charles. Yeah, between Cody Pickett of Washington and Derek Anderson of Oregon State, who's starting to develop with all that potential. Had a five interception game earlier this year against Fresno State in their only loss. He's really bounced back since then, but Steven Jackson, their tailback, is the guy for Oregon State. Handed to him 30 times, and good things happen for the Beavers. Richard Siegler, the middle linebacker, is a heck of a player. Oh, my. He is all over the field. That'll be coming your way 10 o'clock Eastern time next Saturday night, but our business at hand tonight, Nebraska, number 10 in the country. They have owned Missouri for the better part of 25 years, 30 years here in Columbus, or Columbia, and they're trailing right now. You know, They've only trailed in one game this year. That was the Penn State game. They trailed 10-9 at halftime. And came back, obviously, and won that ball game as they're undefeated. You know, if you're going to say anything, any type of criticism of Missouri in the first half, the only thing you could probably point to is, is what they did in their last series instead of running out the clock, gave Nebraska a chance to go downfield and kick a field goal before the half. Well, that's the way the first half is going to end up. And a good 30 minutes for the Missouri Tigers trying to snap that 24-game losing skid. To the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Missouri heads to the locker room leading 14 to 10. Craig Sager is standing by with Gary Pinkle. Thanks. Well, Coach, you have to leave, but how disappointing are you that you didn't run out the clock and you gave them a chance to score before the half? Well, we, we were going to go for it. We're going to try to score points. That's what we're going to try to do. But you, know, you can't. a 20-yard punt doesn't, do, doesn't work very well, and obviously uh, uh, they got a little momentum back. Not going to play conservative in the second half. You feel like we, you have we to got to go for it. We're trying to win a football game. All right, thanks a lot. Run. All right, Craig, that concludes the first half of college football on TBS, a part of Big PlayStation Saturday. Now let's go to Ernie Johnson and Brian Bosworth back in our studios. Welcome back to college football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday as we get set to start the third quarter. The Missouri Tigers lead the Nebraska Cornhuskers 14-10, only the second time this year. Nebraska has trailed at halftime, thanks in part to three turnovers by the Huskers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Ron Fuller. We've talked a lot about that Nebraska defense, but it's been the Missouri defense that has really caused the problems tonight. They, they've been opportunistic, haven't they? You know, knocking balls free when they get an opportunity. And of course, in the kick game, that's where it's been big for Missouri because Nebraska's had trouble handling it on punt and kickoff returns. You take a look at the defense, they have, they've been moving very quickly to the football. Nebraska's had some success running the football, but Missouri's stiffened when Nebraska's gotten in close on most occasions. David Horn, number nine, has had the most success, 75 yards running it. But here, James Kinney, number 24, knocking the ball free. That turnover led to seven points for the Missouri Tigers. And you take a look at the halftime statistics, obviously the turnovers, but how about the total yards? Already plus 22 for Missouri over Nebraska's total that they allow opponents to average this year. Well, one of the reasons is Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, has been more aggressive in pushing routes downfield in the pass game, and Brad Smith has used his legs very well getting into the secondary in the first half. Well, as we told you at the top of the show, Missouri won the toss to start things off, and they defer to the second half, so they will be receiving here as we... Get quarter number three on the way, but quarter number three has been very kind to the Nebraska Cornhuskers. No one this year has scored a point on Nebraska in the third. In fact, the Huskers have outscored their opposition 60 to nothing in quarter number three. Kick with the wind as the wind has really picked up here going from left to right. And Sandro DeAngelis boots it out of bounds. Let's take a look at the scoring summary. It started out with a bang. Mark LaFleur, 55-yard TD reception. Nebraska's 7-0, Charles. Yeah, easy swing pass, great blocks downfield. Mark LaFleur takes it the distance. Then Zach Abram with some very determined running gets into the end zone. And a beautiful throwback pass. Darius Outlaw to Brad Smith. Great blocking downfield. Big block by Mr. Drage, number 76. Lets him into the end zone. Missouri with a four-point advantage as we start the third. And the rain starts up again. A sellout crowd of 68,000-plus on hand tonight. Smith, pass complete up to the 40-yard line to the 41-yard line. 
Sean Coffey on the reception. This looks like how Missouri started the ball game. Remember, first couple plays in, in the game, mm -hmm. they threw the ball downfield. The first time they tried to get way downfield, Nebraska covered, he had to go short. The second play, coming underneath, on target. I said early in the second quarter, Brad Smith seemed to be settling into the game. I stand by that statement. I think he's locked in at this point. Almost tied on the ground, straight ahead and running over the right side. Not much running room. What did Frank Solich have to say at the end of the first 30 minutes? Our Craig Sager found out. Craig. Well, he told us he and they may be trailing 14 to 10, but he thought the momentum was leading their way. He said you can't do much about those special team turnovers right now, but what we can do is go out, have the black shirt defense stop Missouri in this opening drive, and then give the ball back to the offense because he thought the offense was moving the ball very well. He said, yeah, we're behind, but I like the momentum. Well, they had almost 300 yards, 288 yards to be exact in the first half, so they were moving the football. It wasn't a total loss in no. the first half for them, was it? Damian Nash, he'll try the right side, gets up to about the 45-yard line. What we see in this Missouri offense, we saw it at times, not all the time in that first 30 minutes, tempo. They've worked on tempo the last two weeks, and we're seeing the effects of that work right now. Yeah, they're, they're in and out of the huddle. They're very confident approaching the line of scrimmage. We talked about the, how the offensive line had been challenged by Dave Christensen, and they've lived up to it tonight. You know, you get you get tired of hearing for two weeks, you know, you guys didn't play very well. Mm -hmm. And those guys want to sh want to shake that tag off and have a big ball game to show on film on Sunday. Third down, we'll call it five. Smith, tough pass as he rolls to the left. Throws back across the green, almost intercepted. That ball started to float on Brad Smith. Josh Bullock's almost had his second interception of the night. Ooh, you got to be careful when Bullock's around there. Just a tad late getting rid of the ball, and you know why? Because he was moving to his left, had to take the time to square his shoulders in order to make the throw. Thompson Amboga came open early in the route. Brad Smith unable to get it to him at that time, leading to a punt. Nice break on the ball by Bullock's number 20 for Nebraska. He came a long way to knock that one away. Well, Josh Davis back in his 18-yard line. Hasn't seen a whole lot of action at tailback. And another bad kick by Missouri. This is going to be real short. And again, Nebraska with excellent field position at the 37-yard line. Now it's time for the Best Buy Authority Report, and here's our resident authority, Charles Davis. But well, that sounds good. I like that. I can only live up to it. Take a look at the average starting drive for Missouri against Kansas. They started their own 22 for the whole ball, for the ball game, so obviously an improvement for them. Nebraska last week, they started their own 46 against Troy State. They're down 16 for that. Nebraska had held a plus 15-yard advantage in field position for the season coming into the game. Now that punt covered 18 yards. He has gone downhill since his first punt of 52. In fact, the last three punts were 35, 21, and 18 for Missouri as Laura takes it out of bounds. You know, Frank Solich made a great point. Hey, listen, let's just stop them. And so many coaches, so many big-time college football coaches, they love the opening drive of the second half. It's kind of like basketball. You get on that first five minutes, you make a little run, you put the team back on their heels. So were you in my locker room when I was playing ball? I'm here, exactly, baby. That's exactly what we've <laughs> said every week. Johnny Mayer's always about the first five minutes of each half. First five minutes, jump on someone, keep the intensity there. That's what Nebraska's going to try and do to start the second half here. Picked up three, second down and seven. Three step drop, pump fakes, looks, double clutches, gets it up to about the 48-yard line to Ross Pilkington. That is his second reception of the night. Pilkington, one of the interesting stories of this Nebraska offense. Just a sophomore out of Fort Collins, Colorado, is a draft pick by the Colorado Rockies. In fact, the 20th round back in 2000. And went to on the, all those great uh, Pioneer League bus trips and said, I want to play football. And, Ron Brown, the receiver's <laughs> coach, just happened to call him and said, hey, come on and play. Let's go. You travel a little bit better when you play college football for oh. Nebraska than you do in the Pioneer League. And Pilkington was a high school teammate of Josh Davis's. Mm -hmm. And you eat better, too. Oh, yes, you do. Morning, Crewell. In the backfield, Ward keeps it, leans forward up to about the 46-yard line. Ellison on the stop. SI.com is your source for scores and breaking sports news. You'll find on SA.com right now a bunch of upsets in college football today, which EJ and Boz talked about at halftime. As we look at Jamal Lord, he has been through the boos, he's been through the cheers, and because of all that, that young man's a better quarterback. And, and what a strong person he's going to be throughout his whole life. He, he can handle anything. Try on the left side, bouncing around, it's David Horn. 
Okay, let's get in uh, Barney Cotton's uh, head a little bit here. Josh Davis is the starting eye back. He has not played that much. In fact, uh, you know, he had, uh, I think he has five carries in that first half. David Horn is getting all the carries now. Why? Because David Horn carried the ball well in the first half, got into a rhythm. And when you get a running back into a good rhythm, and we've seen it over the years at Nebraska, all the great eye backs as we come up on second and short. Yeah, it looks like they're going to measure for it. What was the characteristic about all the great eye backs? Mm -hmm. The more carries they got, the better that they performed. That's right. Because now you can feel the blocks. You can sense where everything's coming from. You're really into the ball game. David Horn has that look tonight for Nebraska. Here's the management. measurement. will be a tad short. But, you know, you talk about Nebraska. They led the nation in rushing in 2000, 2001. But they really have not had a legitimate option attack since, I'd have to think it was back in 97 because they had the breakaway speed of Amon Green. Yeah, and, and, and Scott Frost also was an mm -hmm. excellent ball carrier. Second and short, if you're Barney Cotton right now with Jamal Lord, as well as he's thrown the ball tonight, this might be a chance, might be a time you run your option pass and try and break one deep, either to, either to Harry in number 11 or Cookington's in the game. He's not in, it's like Lila is in the ball game. But this would be a chance because of field position. From the eye, they're just gonna go straight ahead and try to get the first down, but Missouri stacks things up and it's still gonna be close. Lord did what you like doing, though. Instead of trying to jump over the top, just get behind, you know, the big guys in front and just bury the head and try to see if you can get that 8, 10 inches. If you watch all of our games, you'll get tired of me saying the same thing over and over, but I've never understood a quarterback trying to dive with no momentum. You know, you, you don't have a running start, and when you have no momentum, you get knocked back and knocked mm -hmm. to the side too easily. Get down low and burrow behind those 300-pounders. According to our Home Depot first and 10 line, he's got the first down by about the length of a football. We'll and, have to see. And the, the first and 10 line from Home Depot always gets it right. Okay? <laughs> Putting pressure on the sponsors. I mean, it's no, no question. You're right. It's no Look question. I no, mean, no. Why, are we, why are we even debating no. it? You're okay? absolutely right. Mr. Mr. Juszczyk, Steve Juszczyk, Mr. Referee. Just check with us. Just, just ask us. We'll give you a thumbs up, right? We'll give you the Home Depot first and 10 line does not lie. That's right. What, what, what our partner Maceo, Maceo tell us today, Maceo Gray? Hey, the eye in the sky God, does don't not lie. lie. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't, you can see the first downs. Nebraska plus two on Missouri right now. Two tight ends with Harry and Pete. And they'll run the option to the left side. The pitch back to Horn. It's inside the 40, knocked out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. James Kinney coming up from that linebacker spot, the junior out of Kankakee, Illinois. Actually did a decent job stringing it out. Yeah. Number 94, and there's Phil Pitts, who normally plays inside, has moved out to defensive end, did a good job of making Jamal Lord commit mm -hmm. one way or the other, pitch it or keep it. He chose to pitch it. That gave James Kinney time to come from inside out, use the sideline as an extra defender, and take the ball carrier over the sideline with a nice tackle. Well, the rain's slacking up a little bit, but still coming down in case you just joined us. Tied at seven at the end of one, 14 to 10 at halftime. Right ahead and running, classic Nebraska style again. That'll be short of the first down by about two and a half yards. Quincy Wade, the sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri, coming up from that rover spot. His first tackle of the evening. One thing I'm noticing now, watching Missouri's defensive line, they're shuffling players in and out mm -hmm. on almost every play. It's not just pass situations. Nebraska's so big, strong, and heavy that they don't want their defensive linemen to wear down in this game, so they're using a number of them on every play, trying to keep fresh legs on the field. Third down, we'll call it three. <laughs> Nothing doing. Great stop by that Missouri defensive front four. Jason Simpson coming around from that whip position, the sophomore out of the Woodlands, Texas, to help in on the tackle. They've got the wind behind them here, Ron, you know, as we get into this with this big down here on fourth down, but I'm not sure they want to trust a field goal kicker for this distance, and why punt it when chances are to go out of bounds? They trust the black shirt defense. They're going to go for it. Well, it'd be a 52-yard field goal. Instead, they put Crewald in front option. of Horn. Here comes the option back to Horn. Has one block, gets it, leans forward to the 30-yard line, and he's got the first down. Nino Williams, the second, coming up with his third tackle of the evening. <laughs> that, that was classic option. You knew it was coming. I, I mean, I, I, we can make the call up here, but it's, it's similar to Vince Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers in the 60s. You knew what was coming. The playbook wasn't that thick, but you know something? They were so skillful at executing and had it tuned up so well. 
that they would just out-execute you in situations such as that. Nebraska got it done on that third down. Nice block by Steve Crewell, the fullback, by the way. And they'll go to the short side of the field with the option. Gets it back this time. Missouri right there to string things out. Mason Simpson again. That's his fourth tackle tonight. Young man's been active, hasn't he? Yes, he has. We watched him on Thursday, and someone blew an assignment in practice, and he climbed all over him. I said, that must be senior leadership. And I looked down, and yeah. he gets a sophomore. I know. <laughs> and, then, and, you know, they call him. We asked the coaches. We said, listen, what about this uh, Simpson kid that was getting on everybody? They go, well, let's just say he's free spirit. He's a little bit of a free spirit. Yeah, but you know spirit. something? If he continues to play in the manner that he's playing tonight, yeah. he can be as free spirited as he wants to. You'll because love, he's making plays. you love the leaders. That's what Gary Pinkle loves to see on defense. Loss of two on the play. Second down and 12 for Nebraska. Have a little opening again. Down inside the 20-yard line. Down to the 18-yard line. Pick up a 13 on the play for Lord. That was a great read by Jamal Lord. He saw the little window open and just cut right through it. Yeah, and, and he got some help, too, because Brian Smith, the defensive end, watch here. He comes inside, and he needs to be outside. See how he missed? And Jamal Lord went to the outside on the zone read. You made a good point there. Read the end crashing, the, the, the defensive guys crashing down. But when he came up into the hole, Brian Smith should have been there to meet him. He came so far inside, he got knocked down. Jamal Lord dipped outside for the first down. This is the 12th play of this drive. Inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line, maybe a pickup of one. C.J. Mosley coming up. And that nose tackle spot, the sophomore out of Fort Leonard, Wood, Missouri. You see the Missouri defense, and again, substitutions mm -hmm. all across the defensive front. Every play, they're shuffling in at least one defensive lineman because Nebraska, they may be slimmer, but they're still big and strong, and they tend to wear you down as the game goes along. Missouri trying to conserve a little bit of energy for the fourth quarter. Now Lord will go to the long side of the field, pitches it back to Horn, has some running room, looks for the 10, inside the 10, down to about the 8-yard line. They'll mark it at the 5. Williams and Harden coming up for the secondary to make the stop. You remember the great swimmer Tracy Calkins? Oh, yes. Okay, now because it's wet, I can use this analogy. Look at how Horn just slips and moves and uses the field in order to continue to get downfield. What I mean by that is he sees all the openings. He leans one way, brings it back the other way. They always talked about Tracy Calkins, how she used the water so well to propel herself. David Horn using the field, sure-footed in his cuts. First and goal from the five. Nebraska last in the Big 12 in red zone offense. They pitch it back. Horn, kiss him goodbye. He's into the golden goal post. Watch the block by number six, Deontay Grixby. Gets out in front. See how he cuts him down right there? Defensive back has no chance at that point to get to David Horn. That is his third rushing touchdown of the year. And David Horn over 100 yards rushing the football. Dykes on for the extra point, and it is good. Frank Solich told our Craig Sager, let's get the black shirts out there, stop them, score in our first possession. He's prophetic. Nebraska's regained the lead. College football on TBS brought to you by Office Depot. What you need, what you need to know. And Hampton Inn, we love having you here. Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome you back to a very damp and chilly Faro Field in Columbia, Missouri, where the Missouri Tigers led it intermission. But on their first drive of the second half, Nebraska scores to regain the advantage at 17 to 14. Sandro D'Angelo set to kick it away. Roberson standing back on the goal line. With the win, it's going to be a short kick at the eight. Roberson gets up to about the 20 yard line, pick up a 12, and Missouri will take over. Well, this week's installment of Home Depot Building a Team features Nebraska first year coaches. We touched on it in the opening quarter. Six new assistants have joined the team. With, we've talked about Barney Cotton and Bo Pelini, but they've also added a couple of good names in Marvin Sanders and Jimmy Williams. Yeah, you got to really like Marvin Sanders and Jimmy Williams, both former Husker players who have come yeah. back to coach at their alma mater. 
What did you say about Marvin? Can still run about a. Uh, he ran a 4.52 the first day to get the Huskers came back in tennis shoes at the age of 36. Zach <laughs> Abram is. Yeah, that's not too bad. Zach Abram's checked back into the lineup and he has the first carry of this possession. Picks up about seven on the play. How important is this now for Missouri to answer that? touchdown by Nebraska. Well, it, I think we go back to what we said about Nebraska. No panic at this point. Plenty of time left in, in the ball game, let alone the third quarter, 820 on the clock. But they need a good drive. You know, you got to come up the field with a good feeling here and not turn the ball over. Again, field position where Nebraska has a chance to go short field and score again. Well, field position is something that the uh, Missouri coach is telling us that they must win. Second down and short. Smith, a little play action pass, plenty of time. Oh my, he's got a lot of real estate. Crosses the 35, gets a block, up to the 50, down to about the 46 yard line. The big hit was from Marcus James. He's the one that set the block that freed Smith. Great job by Brad Smith, patience in the pocket. Watch Marcus James right there. Excellent block downfield, that allowed Brad Smith, another, I'm telling you, 5, 10, nearly 15 yards of territory. And look at how field position has changed. They are now in Nebraska territory. Mm. Troy State took four snaps last week against Nebraska in Nebraska's territory for the game. For the entire game. Pick up a 27 on the play. That's the Brad Smith we saw last year. Keep it on the ground. Running room inside the 40 down to the 38-yard line. It's Zach Abram again. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson on a little Georgia, Tennessee. Yeah, Georgia had the lead 10-0 on Tennessee when the Vols came up with their longest scoring pass in school history. DeCorey Bryant had it taken away by Tennessee's Mark Jones, who took it the rest of the way to make it 13-7 in a big battle in the SEC East, Ron. All right, Charles, the loser of that, either you or Ernie, a Georgia grad, have to sing the other team's theme song next week. How about that? <laughs> that didn't go over too big. Try the right side, slipping and sliding on this <laughs> wet field turf. I don't think it's going to happen. Zach Abram. You, you just don't want to hear me sing. Trust me on that you one. You can sing solo. Solo, <laughs> nobody hears you. How's that? <laughs> well, you know, that Georgia Tennessee highlight we saw, the catch that Mark Jones made. Yeah. Another example of two way players in college football. You know, the proliferation that we've seen. Yeah. A defensive back and wide receiver. He competed as a defensive back on that play, took it away, and ended right. up scoring. Well, here in Missouri facing third down and three. They're only two of seven on third down occasions tonight. Penalty flags thrown. They're going to back them up even farther. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Have your penalty. Repeat third down. Well, one thing Gary Pinkle has done, he's taken care of the intangibles, like turnovers and things like that. And penalties is another thing that Missouri hasn't done a whole lot of this year. In fact, they're number two. In the NCAA, D1 and fewest penalties. UAB is number one. You can see what they do per game. How about that? Yeah, two turnovers for the game for, for the season coming into tonight. This is this is prior to the beginning of this game. They'd had two lost fumbles, zero interceptions. Of course, that number will change now. But again, ball security, very important for the Missouri Tigers. Gary Pinto preaching it. That was only their third penalty. Smith throwing it out on the flat, short hopping it up at the 35-yard line. Incomplete, the officials say. Marcus James said, wait a minute, I had it. The senior from Liberal, Kansas. Yeah, look, look like Tom Keeling or Tim Crowley, the linesman or line judge, had a good view of it from the inside looking. See the ball coming? That's tough to tough call. To, tough to call for us there with Marcus James blocking it off. But the official was back inside of the play looking directly into it. He signaled right away incomplete. So I've got to trust that he yeah. had the best view of it. No question about it. Brock Harvey, his last two punts, 21 and 18 yards. He's punting into a stiff win. Good snap. Much better kick. Angling it towards the right side. That is a beautiful kick. I think it's oh, a new punter. Yeah, it's a good punter. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, Brock Harvey didn't punt, so he gets taken out. Grossler's first kick of the night, and he puts it inside the five. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Big PlayStation Saturday from Thoreau Field in Columbia, Missouri. Too much Brad Smith. I love it. <laughs> Along with Charles Davis and Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back. We've got 6.09 left to play in quarter number three. And we have a 17-14 game on a rainy and windy night here in Columbia. And this is where Matt Eberflus defensive defense needs a three and out. 
Well, three and out for field position purposes would be huge for the Missouri Tigers. Todd Gossler, by the way, was the punter. He's a senior out of San Diego, California. He wasn't even listed on there too deep. Straight ahead running. Deep, plenty of running room. Steve Crewall, the junior out of Scotia, Nebraska. That is only his fourth carry of the year, but it was an impressive one. Yeah, this is a tendency breaker because Nebraska rarely uses the fullback. Most of the time you see the option game, so every now and then you hand it inside, and if people don't take care of their responsibilities and read their keys, you have a chance to bust a big play. That's exactly what happened for Nebraska. Got them out of the shadow of their own end zone and another first down. Pick up a 15, that's his biggest carry of the year. And we've got penalty flags. I think someone jumped from Nebraska like Phil Peets or Dan Ville Waldrop down on the defense yeah, on the offensive line. Start offense. Five yard penalty. Sixth penalty against Nebraska tonight. This this is almost like a reprieve for the Missouri Tigers. You go to first and 15. Again, they've got to find a way to keep Nebraska pinned here and make them punt from deep in their Let's own territory. Go. First down and 15. Nebraska's average start tonight, their own 28-yard line. They fake the reverse. They keep it on the ground, straight ahead running. James Kinney up for another stop. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson. Hey, watch this, Charles. Tennessee trying to take the lead right before the half, and the ball's loose, and there's Sean Jones of Georgia going about 90 for a 20-7 to halftime lead. I ain't singing Rocky Top, pal. But you might be singing glory, glory, back to you. He's, hey, he's hey, humming over here, Ernie. It's, it's a 60-minute game, Ernie. It's a 60-minute <laughs> game. Well, this game has about 4.53 left to play in the third. Nebraska keeping it on the ground, clipping over the 20-yard line on second down at about nine. Here's David Horn again. Does this limit your play calling? We've got another injured player for Missouri. Does this limit uh, Barney's play calling, the way things are going tonight? I don't think so. I think they've still called the same plays that they, they like to call. The only thing they've really missed is the big strike downfield off the option pass. See Garth Glissman wearing the pullover, signaling plays in. Also, Joe Daly, number 12, the backup quarterback. One of those guys is the live guy in terms of signals in case someone's picking them up. And they're trying to dwarf Barney Cotton there in the middle. There's Coach Cotton, and let me tell you something. There's no dwarfing that guy. No, no, no. He's a big man. That's a lot of man right there. And he's done a phenomenal job in his first year at Nebraska, especially with the attitude of the offensive line, because they've been knocking people back all season long. Nino Williams, the second, is the injured player. We hope to have an update. Nebraska, 6 of 11 on third down tonight. Lord throws it out of the flat. LaFleur, he is going to be covered up, but he's going to lose a couple. Great job by Curry coming up for Missouri. And Jason Simpson, number six, almost didn't believe it. Watch number six, all right, coming from inside out. I believe that's Jason Simpson there. Almost didn't believe it because this is a play they've run all night. Watch Jason kind of hesitate there. See that? Kind of stuttered and still came on and made the play. How many times have we seen Nebraska run that play in this situation tonight? Safe pass, a few blockers out in front. You've got to get underneath it. That's exactly what Jason Simpson did. They're forcing the punt, and they should have good field position with one of the best return men in the Big 12 back there, Marcus James. Kyle Larson standing on his own five. Good snap, little pressure. Line drive kick to James, angling toward the sideline, and it'll go out of bounds, and Missouri will have excellent field position with 3.37 left to play in quarter number three. Plenty of time left. Nebraska number 10 of the country by a field goal over Gary Pinkle in Missouri. And welcome back to beautiful Columbia, Missouri. The leaves are changing. The weather's getting a little colder as college football and TBS Superstation has Nebraska and Missouri, and you're looking at the Jesse Hall, replaces the old academic hall, represents Missouri's commitment to higher education. And the Tiger fans, 68,000 strong, coming into Faroe Field tonight. A standing room only crowd. Tickets have been sold out for a couple of weeks. They've braved the rain, a little chilly temperature now, and they're seeing a pretty good football game. Third possession of the second half for the Tigers, Smith. Throwing into a crowd, incomplete, almost picked off again. T.J. Hollowell was right there to get his hands on it, couldn't bring it in. 
Okay, back me up. What did we say to each other in the break? They got to go back to their running game. Well, you know, I'm just wondering if they want to reestablish it because they've been play action pass on first down pretty consistently throughout the ball game. And Bo Pelini got a nice type on as we take a look at Gary Pinkle, the head coach. Mm -hmm. And he he had a nice defense called for it and almost an interception by T.J. Hollowell. And they go back on the ground, punching over the left side, inside the 40. Good, tough running up to about the 42-yard line. Zach Abram, let's take a look at the Missouri's leaders for tonight. As far as passing the football, Smith, you can see. Right now he has a couple of interceptions. Abram, 60 yards on 12 carries. And Omoga, three receptions for 30 yards. But he's averaging 10 yards of reception. Yeah, I'd like to see, like see Abram get a few chances to carry the football. He carried it very well against Kansas in the first half. Didn't touch it much in the second. You know, he's a guy that I think more times mm -hmm. he touches it, he's going to get stronger also. It's tough to give it to him on third and five. No one has scored on Nebraska in the third quarter this year. And there's only 246 left in the third tonight. The quick look and pass, tipped incomplete, should have been caught. The pass was there. Brad Ekwu had it right in his hands and couldn't pull it down. Yeah, he's a, fr a true freshman. Nice slant, ball was right there. And he knows how he was trying to, to cradle it against his body. He was trying to do two, two things there. Cradle the ball against his body and absorb the hit he knew was coming. And unfortunately, he didn't get the first thing done, which is catch the football. Because you're gonna take the hit. <laughs> that's right, there you go. <laughs> so, that's what they tell you, catch it. You're gonna take the shot anyway. Well, Tom Gossler, a former junior college All-American, his first kick was great, second kick, not so great, and another. Bad punt by Missouri. USA Today is the place for a comprehensive look at sports. Get all the latest scores, stats, standings, and game recaps to keep you up to date with your favorite teams and players. Only in USA Today. Now that was 26 yards on the kick. I already talked about Brock Harvey's problems kicking the football, and Tom Gossler had a 40-yarder inside the five-yard line on his first kick, and then he throws down a 25-yarder. But I think he'll get another opportunity. Yeah, you, know, you, you don't just, you know, you put him into the game cold. He does well for you on one second, but not so well. Keep giving him chances. Play action pass, Jamal Lord eludes the rush. Tries to get to the outside, and he does. Crosses the 40, scampers up to about the 44-yard line before James Kinney threw him out of bounds. That's going to be close to a first down. Now, sometimes athleticism just wins. Now watch there, Jamal Lord, all right? He's going to come out and make a play, and then watch to the bottom of your screen. You're going to see number six, Jason Simpson, right here. He's going to come up, and he's got a chance to make the play. He's in perfect position. They do everything right. Take away the cutback, you know, play your responsibilities, and Jamal Lord just won that one-on-one -on -one battle. He's a great athlete. 240 yards rushing the football right now for Nebraska. Lord, play action, looking down the middle deep, has to go to his secondary receiver, pass is complete to Steve Crewald. That is his second reception of the night, or first reception of the night. What a great job by Jamal Lord. You called the whole play, looking yeah. downfield for Matt Herrian, number 11, trying to get deep. Ordinarily, that's a one read thing for Jamal Lord. One read, fling it up there, see what happens. He actually came off to his second read, which was Freewall, the fullback, and made a positive play. Well, you see Jamal Lord's number is pretty decent tonight. Missouri showing a blitz. Lord just cuts the defense. Pulls his way for the first down up to the 45 yard line. Jamal Lord, I'm telling you, he's playing a complete game tonight, isn't he? He really is because he's handling things so well as the quarterback, not just not just in the run game, which we expected out of him, but as you just mentioned, the pass game, he's been mm -hmm. very good in it, not throwing the ball up for grabs. For the most part, he's made good throws all night, only on a couple of occasions as he missed open receivers, which has been the bulk of criticism against him. He's playing a very good football game. Two tight ends for Nebraska, first and ten. From the eye, Davis gets the carry, and he gets inside the 40 down to the 35-yard line. 
pickup of 11. We were wondering what happened to Josh Davis. There he is. Well, he, he, he's seen the numbers that David Horn has put up, <laughs> and he is the starting eye back, and he doesn't want to give that up very easily. This is a young man who worked so hard in the offseason, lost about 10 pounds to get quicker, and just it really just won the job. That's Seized right. it in the, in, the, in the summer. Along with his dad, Tony, became the first father-son combo to get 100 yards rushing each. Lord, nice fake on the pitch. He's got some running room. Scampering down the sidelines. Touchdown, Nebraska. I think Barney Cotton may have gotten hurt there. Great play, but the offensive coordinator's got a hitch in his get along, but Lord scores the touchdown. I bet when someone oh, was making boy. the block, yeah. they might have rolled over across the sideline, but I hope he's going to be okay. Mitchell Barney thought his injuries were over when he left the National Football League. Dykes' his cook, kick is good, but Jamal Lord, with the touchdown run, covered 35 yards. Here it is again. Well, the, the key to all this is Jamal Lord makes a great run, but watch the missed tackles. All right, gets inside there. One. There's a second one. There's a third one. The guys clutching and grabbing. There's a fourth one at the goal line. No one running through the ball carrier and wrapping up. Good run by Lord, but he had a lot of help there. Aided and abetted by four missed tackles at oh, least yeah. going downfield. Well, Barney's limping, or, or limping around, and they're going <laughs> to probably saying, don't, no, just tape me up. I'm, I'm staying in this game. You know what's interesting here? A little historical perspective on Barney mm. Cotton's injury. We're here at Missouri, right? Dan Devine, one of the all-time great coaches yeah. here at Missouri. When Dan Devine was with the Green Bay Packers, he got taken out on a play like that. That's right. Suffered a broken leg in the year the Packers went 10-4, and four, went to the playoffs for the first time since the Lombardi years. You know, so you got a Missouri, you got a Missouri <laughs> guy here because we're in Columbia. That's right. Barney Cotton getting caught on the sideline, but I'm guessing Big Barney is going to walk it off, and there'll be no medical attention until this game's over. He didn't look like he was going to come off the field very easily, no, did he, he? That man's going to play hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tyrone Roberson is back again on the goal line. Andrew D'Angelo set to kick it with the win. It's going to be a short kick from the 11-yard line. Here comes the reverse on the kickoff. The wall is setting up to the 30 to the 40 tiptoeing out of bounds at about the 45 yard line Brad Akwekwu What a great play because when you watch watch the action because it's going to start this way but the wall is all going to be set back here and you've said to me before, you know, after a great play, and I say a guy should get more, and yeah. you'd say, well, you want Raquel Welch to cook? That's right. Well, right here, I'm thinking he should have gotten more. See where he <laughs> hopped out of bounds on the sidelines? That's right. I'm thinking that he should have got, boom, go, right now. Hop over to guy, get an extra five or ten yards. But you know something? He's a true freshman. That That's will right. come in time. It will come. Great he, athlete. He is going to learn. Zach Abram, the lone man in the backfield. Smith keeps it, dumps it off in the flat, passes complete over the 50, down to about the 45-yard line. Nice little touch pass to J.D. McCoy, the tight end, the senior out of Moore, Oklahoma, just outside of Oklahoma City and in the backyard of Norman, Oklahoma. And it's great to have him back. He's a guy, and that looks like Barney Cotton talking to his guys, still upright. J.D. McCoy made it one of the best catches in Missouri history, I'm mm -hmm. going to say in history, the Middle Tennessee game when they were struggling oh, yeah. in the fourth quarter, a fourth down play, he caught a pass reaching behind him, catching it, and got his knee hurt on the same play. Three wide receivers to the right. 43 seconds left in the third. Smith throwing on the run. It's tipped up in the air. Smith does a smart thing, just throws it back down. Bernard Thomas is the man who got the hand on the football. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. How heads up was that, though? Instead of trying to catch it, you'd have about a ten-yard loss. Knock it down. Yeah, we we know this is an excellent school academically. You know, we work with some people here going to journalism school. Oh yeah. You know, wanted to come here because it's one of the best in the country. Those were great football smarts we saw by number 16. Great job. No sense picking it off and getting oh. tagged again. Knock it down. Second and ten. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Five-step drop. Smith has some running room. 
Gets inside the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Lakeven Smith on the stop, the sophomore out of Macon, Georgia. Six tackles for Smith tonight. Had his best game versus Penn State, and this young man's getting better for Bo Pelini. That play had the look of possibly popping a little bigger, didn't it? If it wasn't, if it weren't from Lakeven Smith, number 66, pursuing inside out, and Lornell McPherson, number one, making a nice tackle downfield. Brad Smith might have had a huge mm -hmm. game. Instead, they've got a third down situation. Third down and four, and that's going to be the end of quarter number three. So Nebraska keeps their third quarter string alive. They outscore Missouri 14 0 in the third, and they've got the advantage by 10. Final 15 straight ahead. Welcome back to College Football on TBS, part of Big PlayStation Saturday as we get set to start the fourth quarter. Number 10, Nebraska, has taken over the lead at 24 to 14 in the fourth quarter. Nebraska this year has only given up seven total points. Along with Charles Davis, Craig Sager, I'm Ron Thulin. Missouri facing third down at about five. Smith keeps it, has got the first down running room. He's got one man to beat. Goodbye, Brad Smith. Given up one touchdown this year in the fourth quarter, and their second happens here tonight with the Missouri Tigers and Brad Smith. That was vintage Brad Smith. Matheny on for the extra point to pull Missouri within three. Mm, got some jumping, a little over action, anxious, and it might be against Nebraska. You're Missouri, you got your fingers crossed. They pointing fingers. You did it. No, you did it. Let's listen in to Steve Hughes check. Give us the word. Offside on the defense. Now Gary Pinkle squad. The distance to the goal penalty. Harry Pinkle said we've had to compete for 60 minutes, and they've done that so far tonight, Charles. But this is where Nebraska has shined this year as opposed to last year. Because of their conditioning, they've taken control, even though they just gave this up. Can Nebraska come back? Yeah, and a lot of people are wondering right there why Missouri might not go for two when the ball's on the one and a half. Yeah. Because you just need the extra point to get yourself within a field goal. Plenty of time. So left. don't bother with it. Now watch this. Brad Smith comes out, okay? He's a quarterback, but look here. You've got the three receivers. Watch what happens. He audibles to the inside zone run. Watch how they shift. See how they shifted there? I think they had a quick screen called to the wide side of the field. He audibles to the zone run inside, fakes to the fullback, gets excellent blocking. And then, of course, what did Gary Pinkle tell us? When he gets into the secondary, he's lightning. And once again, a lightning bolt was dropped on the Nebraska secondary as Brad Smith goes into the end zone. That was the longest run against this Nebraska defense this year. 39 yards for Smith. Yeah, I really think that was an audible by, by the way that they shifted. That wasn't a shift off of a set play. They shifted and changed their formation configuration. They love to throw the quick screen out there in that situation. Again, Dave Christensen, the offensive coordinator, has to like what he just saw out of his sophomore all-star quarterback. Now you get the crowd back into it, and even though we've had a lot of rain, it's stopped for the moment. No one has left the stadium. Now you talked about a sellout here, and it's been aided by the Nebraska Cornhusker fans who oh, they... turned out in force. A lot of people tell me that a lot of these fans that travel are people who can't get tickets That's in right. Lincoln. So the only way to see their Huskers is possibly to go on the road, and this place is packed, even the the Rock M is covered. Now Matheny will pooch kick it again down to about the 23-yard line. Up to the 40-yard line of the 42-yard line is Jack O'Halloran again. Had a fumble earlier tonight. Let's take a look at what Brad Smith, the sophomore from Youngstown, has done tonight. Well, using his legs to get by himself a little more time in the pocket. Now this time, and look at watch, it, watch him downfield. Gets a good block downfield. Big play by Brad Smith, and now the zone play, faking it, seeing the hole, and then once he gets an opportunity, turns on the Jets, and we're down, we're within three now. Take a look. Last year's matchup, pretty close, not very big in total offense tonight. 
Look at the two of them. Oh, Big time what, numbers. We're having a quarterback battle here. Two great running quarterbacks. Yep. David Horn on the carry up over the 45 yard line. Let's take a look at that graphic again if we can guys in the truck because uh, I think this really tells a whole story just how powerful both men are and I think what surprises people is the 148 yards passing the right. football for Nebraska. Today. Yeah and you've talked about what, what a great job done with their legs. They've done with their arms tonight too but also with their smarts. Brad Smith with the last audible. Jamal Lord taking what the defense gives him not forcing it downfield. Penalty flag. Nebraska, by the way, only averaging 110 yards passing the football per game this year. That's good for 114th in the NCAA. You know how many teams are in NCAA Division One <laughs> A? <laughs> okay, there's only three teams behind us, right? <laughs> that's correct. We'll do, we'll do it that way. But that's not all that unusual for Nebraska because no. usually they're in the top five in rushing, I believe, coming into tonight. They were number six in the nation mm -hmm. in rushing, so <laughs> yeah, they make up for it in other ways. Oh, yeah. And that always, I always get kind of a chuckle when I hear some other commentators talk about, well, you know, Nebraska needs to throw the ball, blah, blah, blah. Hey, they've won national championships running the football. Listen, they, they beat a Penn State team throwing the ball six times this year. Now Nebraska's showing a little confusion. And they're going to have to call a timeout with 13.57 left to play. Number 10, Nebraska, trying to extend their streak against Missouri. Welcome back to Big PlayStation Saturday, Nebraska and Missouri. Nebraska has won 24 straight. A little confusion over in Missouri. A little confusion bringing in the plays. Last year, they used to do it with wide receivers, Nebraska. Yeah, Nebraska's always brought plays in with wide receivers. Go back to Bob Devaney, Tom Osborne. This year's the first year they've used signals to signal in from the sideline. On third down, Lord runs away to the short side of the field, and he is going to be dropped. At the 43-yard line, Brian Smith, the redshirt freshman. We've mentioned his name a few times, and finally he gives us the highlight we've been looking for. He chases Jamal Lord from the backside. Look to the left of your screen. See him right there. Brandon Barnes, number 21, also in excellent position. Bring up another third and long. Look for Matt Eberflu, the defensive coordinator from Missouri, to turn Brian Smith loose again, going after Jamal Lord. But they must be conscious of Lord scrambling at, up the middle of the pocket. Third and 11. Lord fakes the pitch. He is in big trouble. The ball is out. The ball is loose. Missouri has it. And they're knocking on the door. James Kinney forced the fumble. Watch number 24, James Kinney. We mentioned earlier in the ball game that he's one of their leading tacklers, but they haven't gotten the big plays from him. Hadn't forced fumbles, hadn't paid an interception. Well, tonight, he's recovered a fumble, and he's forced two fumbles. James Kinney has come to play in this ball game against Nebraska. And Deidre Carrington, the redshirt freshman out of Mexico, Missouri, is the one who came up with it, and they're inside the 10. Four fumbles for Nebraska tonight, and they've lost all four. First play, left side. The black shirts are there. Zach Abram, nothing doing. Kenny has played a whale of a ball game, though, for that Missouri defense. He's been one of their most productive players over the last three years, but they weren't getting the, the, the difference-making plays out of him, where balls were knocked loose, things that would turn the ball over to their offense. Well, he's answered the call tonight in a big way. Second and goal. Second down and goal. From the shotgun, here comes Nebraska. Smith tries to go right up the middle, and he is dropped. He'll lose about a yard on the play. Smith. Last time Missouri beat Nebraska here in Columbia, 1973, believe it or not. Nebraska was the number two team in the country. In fact, it was October 13th, 1973. 11 straight losses to the Huskers. And that was Dr. Tom Osborne's first season as the head That's coach right. of Nebraska. Third and goal. Third down and goal. And you know Missouri's thinking touchdown here. They don't want to just tie the game up. Smith, plenty of time. Trying to get away. Here come the black shirts, and Smith is going to run backwards, throws it over his head. 
And it'll bring up a fourth down. Demorio Williams is the one who was all over him from the get-go. Steve Juszczyk is going to talk to us about this. The ball be placed here, fourth down. Forward progress stop. Demario Williams just emerged on that play, didn't he? The speed of number seven. Oh coming my. from out of the picture, into the picture, and forcing that play by Brad Smith. And now Missouri going for the tying, tying field goal. Well, they said forward progress was stopped. He lost five on the play, so now they're going to attempt the field goal. They'll mark it at the 22. It's a 32-yarder from Michael Matheny. Riccio will hold the fame. Riccio looking in the end zone, has a man. Touchdown, Missouri! Victor Cisse! in your memories to last year's game between Oklahoma and Missouri. The Sooners did it to the Tigers. That was exactly right. Last year, Oklahoma was on the ropes here against Missouri, and Bob Stoops pulled out the fake field goal through the touchdown pass, and Oklahoma goes on to win. Gary Pinkle said, he, what did he tell Craig Sager at the half? We're going to win this game. We're trying to win it. That's aggressive play calling right there. And the extra point is good. Gary Pinkle trying to stop a losing skid to Nebraska. They have the lead. It's time to wake up. Good morning, Truman. Great job. Keep those grades up if you want to go to Mizzou. Here comes Billy. He's wide open. The pass is caught. He takes it to the house. A great pass from Brad Smith. It's hard to recreate the Mizzou experience, but that won't stop some people from trying. The Home Depot is more than a store. The Missouri Tigers have just taken the lead against Nebraska. Watch number 19, the holder, Santino Sonny Riccio. He's the backup quarterback and also had tryouts in Major League Baseball with the Marlins and the Cardinals. What a perfect pass to Victor Cisse, their starting tight end, because he was well covered on the play by number two, T.J. Hollowell. They weren't totally fooled no. by the fake. It took a perfect pass over the top. And Gary Pickles guts to make that one work. Sonny Riccio out of Elwood City, Pennsylvania, Lincoln High School. His first touchdown pass in a Missouri uniform. Matheny kicks it out of the end zone in Nebraska. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line. We've talked about the losing streak. 24 straight. How about the current active losing streaks? Notre Dame over Navy. Nebraska's won 34 straight over Kansas. This is number three in the country. Now the Huskers, plenty of time, no time to panic. 11 21 to play in a game. Lawrence, great drop, throws it into the flat. Passes dropped by Steve Freewall, the fullback. Now let's see where that summer conditioning comes in for Nebraska. They've been able to pound on people in the fourth quarter so far this year. And what was that great song I get by with a little help from my friends? Nebraska just helped Missouri. Easy play there for Steve Prewald because he definitely would have had five, seven yards minimum on the pass play. Jamal Lord hit him. Right. And now they open the door for him for a second and long. Three wide receivers to the right. Wiley trying to hear the play on the lower portion of your screen. Lord, the quick pitch, it's on the ground. Davis has to fall on it. Back to the five-yard line. Five fumbles for Nebraska. They've lost four. And look who forces the play. The pass rush guy, Brian Smith. Watch him coming. Boom! He forced it so fast that Jamal Lord really didn't have time to make a good pitch before he hit him right up to right up in the top of the number. And the Nebraska fortunate to get on the fumble. And now comes up third and forever. 
Loss of 14. Uh, Missouri now in defense. I zone blitz. I don't want to give up a huge play. I want pressure, but I still want to cover the receivers downfield. And it is loud. Prewald tries to break a couple of tackles, able to get up to the 10-yard line, well short of the first down. Brandon Barnes with his second tackle of the night. And Nebraska will be forced to kick it away on fourth down, and it's about 20 to go. What a job by this Missouri defense tonight. See, and that's, that's what coaches always talk about. When you play in Nebraska, and you put them in long yardage situations, obviously they give you your best chance because they don't have the sophisticated passing game to take those kind of shots downfield. And Frank Solz looked up at the clock, still almost 10 minutes to go. Going to put it on his black shirt defense as they try and punt it away. Kyle Larson in his end zone. Kicking against the win, and it's a low kick. Marcus James from the 50, looks for the wall, slips, still on his feet, in the 40, down to the 35-yard line. 17 yards on the return, and Missouri with the lead, an excellent field position. We'll be back to Columbia in a moment. Let me tell you something about Jerry McGuire. I am going to take my one client all the way. Our first and ten line is brought to you by Home Depot. The Missouri offense tonight, 379 yards against this black shirt defense of Nebraska. The most the Huskers have given up this year was 319 to Southern Miss. Gary Pinkle's squad has done everything they had hoped for. They've won the turnover battle. They've come up with big plays, and they've attacked on defense. Let's see if Dave Christensen, the offense coordinator, is feeling frisky in this situation and wants to punch it downfield. I think he's going to want to waste some time. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He went left side. May have gotten up to the 35 before Lakeven Smith came up with a stop. There were some big plays in this fourth quarter. Of course, the guy wearing 16 in the black jersey figures to be a big part of those big plays, but the defense has stepped up. James Kinney forcing the fumble. And then the fake. Great call by Gary Pinkle. He told us, we're trying to win a football game. He didn't go right. for the tie there. He went for the win. He's going to keep it on the ground during the 30-yard line. Memorial Williams with another That's tackle. Good. You know, one of the things Missouri did this week is they tried to uh, uh, sort of go along with the speed of Demorio Williams. They had somebody sort of be the scout as Demorio Williams because he has such great speed and nobody's been able to block him this year. Yeah, and the, the guys that they used were defensive backs who were going to be short, smaller and faster coming off the edge. So their offensive tackles had to really get out there and try and block them, trying to simulate the speed that Demorio Williams provides on the field for Nebraska. Mario Williams, an incredible story out of Beckville, Texas. Worked at an oil field for a while before going back to football after sitting out a year. That was a Buckus Award candidate. Smith looking over the middle, caught inside the 15, down to the 13 yard line. Sean Coffey. What? what a catch! <laughs> you and I on it together. That's exactly what I was about to say. Sean Coffey, hello and welcome back to the land of the living. How could they not find this guy as a receiver in two ball games this year? It's a great question, isn't it? 6'5", yeah. 224, a terrific target, and what a great catch. A hands catcher. You often hear about guys being body catchers. If he's a body catcher, he can't make that one. That's Uses right. his hands, brings it down to him. Third reception for Coffee tonight. Smith looking for all of it. Has a man overthrown, incomplete. Smith thought he had him. Ombogo is right there. Very close, but good defense on the play by, by the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They had run him off. See the motion? This is Umboga running back across the middle of the field. Watch the defensive back coming there. Sean Coffey was covered. It looked like Pat Ricketts, number 28, came off of the coverage of Sean Coffey and came back and went through Thompson Umboga to cause the incompletion. Second Seven down and 10. ten. Missouri can get a first down without scoring. Straight ahead running. Down to the six-yard line. Zach Averin, the senior out of Lake St. Louis, Missouri. 
fans for exclusive news and recruiting coverage of your favorite teams. Log on now to Rivals.com. You know, we talk about Zach Abram, how he quietly goes about his business. How about 15 carries tonight for a very quiet 70 yards and a touchdown? And, and, and again, the Kansas game, he carried the ball a bunch in the first half, barely carried it in the second half. They were saying, why not give it to him a little bit more? You wonder here if Gary Pinkle might be thinking four down territory to try and really get a lead against Nebraska. Smith keeps it first down Missouri. First and goal, it'll be at about the two and a half yard line. Now he doesn't have to think about that. You know, right. Now he's back into first and goal with Brad Smith coming down the line. You see TJ Hollowell number two, he has the first shot. Brad Smith slips him, falls inside for the first down. And again, I'm gonna go back to this. They're up four, okay? A field goal obviously gives them a touchdown yep. advantage. But if you're Gary Pinkle, you might think about going four down territory and try and get a big lead, a commanding lead, as you go down with 6.49 on the clock. Curry already 14 points in this fourth quarter. First and goal. Right over the top, nothing doing. Stopped at about the one. You can hear the pads popping on Zach Abert from up here. Patrick Cabongo coming up to make the stop. The senior out of Montreal, Quebec. Yeah, Patrick Cabongo delivered an El Cabong on that one. Let's take a look at the closest to us, Dave Christensen, offensive line coach and offensive coordinator. I think he's called a heck of a game tonight. I think so, too. And David Yost to his right, the quarterback's coach, helping out on Brad Smith. Smith has had a whale of a ball game. And we'll see about Missouri's offensive line here. This is where they can really make a reputation. Smith has rushed for 100 and passed for over 100. Second and goal. Smith keeps it. It's a race to the corner. He looks. Touchdown, Missouri! Five minutes and 53 seconds separates Missouri from 24 years of frustration. Watch number 31, Jarrell Pippins, is in perfect position. He did a great job being a BCR player. Boot, cut back, reverse, stayed in excellent position. But Brad Smith won the one-on-one -on -one battle as a great athlete with the old-fashioned stiff arm. Oh, my, and the extra point is tipped no good. The snap was high. Riccio just couldn't get it down and plan time for Matheny to get a good piece of it. But Brad Smith with the touchdown and Missouri has taken a 10 point advantage over Nebraska. Imagine you could make any car you wanted. It'd have to be dependable, have a roomy, comfortable interior, and it would be worry free for a long, long time. And it would be bulletproof, have like a jet engine and shoot lasers out of the trunk. Wow. It would at least cost a lot less than any car in America. What you'd be imagining is the Kia Rio, the most affordable four-door sedan in America. Imagine that. Now get the Kia Rio starting at 8705 after 1500 cash back, plus a thousand owner loyalty bonus for qualified buyers. For this ball game, Nebraska had only given up seven second half points. Tonight, 20 to Missouri here in quarter number four. And the Tigers have the lead, 34-24. 30 years ago here in Columbia was the last time Missouri beat Nebraska here in Missouri. 1978, they beat him in Nebraska. That's part of the team being honored tonight, wasn't it? With That's Warren right, Powers. Powers. And on that team, Phil Bradley was the All-Big Eight quarterback. Kellen Winslow, James Wilder at running back. Quite a squad. With the win, Davis, five yards deep, he's gonna bring it out. Up to the 20, still running room. Davis still running room. Over the 40, up to the 43 yard line. College football on TBS brought to you by Kia Motors. Seven cars, one belief. Kia make every mile count. The United States Army, an army of one. PlayStation 2. And the Home Depot. Go from wondering how to knowing how at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. 
545 to play in a ball game. Nebraska with the football. Excellent field position. Screen. Lord looking for it. Being chased. Back to his 30. It's closing with a bunch of black shirts, and he is going to run out of bounds at the 30-yard line. A loss of about 13. Greg Sager, that Missouri defense is playing up to the task tonight. Now having a little trouble with uh, Craig's audio. We'll get back to him in a second because what he's going to show you is pretty good. Yeah. The rain, though, has been so hard tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if he short-circuited it out. It stopped for this moment. And, and, and the Missouri defense showing signs of not playing tight. You know, they're not playing to protect that That's lead right. right now, not sitting back on their heels. Went after Nebraska real well on first down. Three wide receivers to the right. Five and a half to play. Lord looking. Throw it over the middle. Intercepted at the 46-yard line. To the 10. Michael Harden. Zach Ville with the interception. Zone blitz, zone blitz. This guy right here, that's Zach Bill. You know what position he plays? Defensive end. And look at how far he dropped in the pass coverage to make the interception to give Missouri an opportunity to really start to believe that they can beat Nebraska for the first time since 1978. I think I was surprised that Bill was so far back. I figured it had to be something in the secondary. Well, when you take a look at Zach Bill, I mean, 6'2", 272. Yeah. Obviously a tremendous athlete to get that much of a pass drop. And, and Jamal Lord trying to tuck a pass in on a crossing route, and Bill made a great play. Now Smith's going to call a timeout. 5.24 to play in the ball game. Missouri by 10. Nebraska plagued by turnovers tonight. They've lost four fumbles. They've had an interception. 1978 in Lincoln, Nebraska, November 18th to be exact. James Wilder scored four touchdowns. Missouri upset second-ranked Nebraska 35-31. Kellen Winslow, the great Kellen Winslow, helped out. Of course, Missouri went out of play in the Liberty Bowl. And it was the last time Missouri beat the Huskers. And, and forced, and, and didn't they force? There's Kellen Winslow, the Hall of Famer, number 83 here at Missouri, number 80 with the Chargers, San Diego Chargers. Nebraska had beaten Oklahoma that year it, it, during the middle of the season. And then at the end of the season, when Missouri beat Nebraska, Nebraska still won the Big Eight, but they ended up in an Orange Bowl rematch That's with right. Oklahoma, which they did not want. And Oklahoma won the rematch. Kellen's kid's not too bad. Hey, he got a little <laughs> bit of game to him. He's got some game. Uh, not his, as much as dad. What's his nickname? The chosen one? That's yeah. his own self-appointed nickname. Uh, no, you know, you're not really crazy about a young guy going with the chosen one. Yeah. But I have a hard time arguing with him the way he's playing right now. I watched him today in the game, and he was on the punt coverage team. He does it He all. went in on punt block for, for Miami also. A true athlete. Here's the situation. 524 to play in the game. Missouri leads it by 10. First and goal for the Tigers. Nebraska swarming defense. Loss of about two on the play. Now let's take a look at tonight's T-Mobile play of the game, and no question about it, it was the fake field goal. Gary Pinkle, big salute to you for making this call. You know, win or lose on that call, Gary Pinkle sent a message to his ball club. We're out to win this ball game. I'm not satisfied with tying it and hoping things go well later. And Big Mo, I said Big Mo is definitely on the side. I'd say so. Of the guys wearing the black shirts tonight. Second down and goal from the nine. Smith on the draw, keeps it inside the five. Touchdown, Missouri!
Watch Brad Smith. You know, Lombardi talked about a seal here and a seal here. We're going to run the play right through the alley. Look at that. Coming right at you. Boy, following his big guys. Getting a block downfield from Thompson Umboga, number 87. De a definite call quarterback draw. And Brad Smith ran that play with a purpose. Great blocking, too. Levine missed the last extra point. Gets this one. Smith, three touchdowns tonight. Had three coming into this game for the season. Let's check in with Ernie Johnson in Atlanta. He's in. They're on Ohio State venturing on the road for the first time this season, taking their 5-0 record with them. But Wisconsin getting this touchdown out of Booker Stanley for a 7-0 Badger lead. That's the way it stands late in the second. Back to you, Ron. Three rushing, one receiving touchdown for Smith tonight. 24 points he accounted for, not too bad. Not bad. And tell Ernie I can I can sing on Wisconsin. And you take go. a look <laughs> at all these numbers for tonight. You know, David Horns had a good night for Nebraska running the football, but right now they're going to have to throw up. But Brad Smith, he has been the big story. We talked about him at the top. Look at the numbers he's put up in this ball game. And the big number of the night, turnovers. Nebraska, five of them, and then the points off of it, Missouri. 21 of them. There's the tail of the tape. Now we were talking to Matt Eberflus, the defensive coordinator of Missouri. One of his keys, takeaways. Absolutely, positively had to have them. They said they hang their head on speed to the ball, vision and break, and takeaways. And they work at punching the ball out. Yeah, they work at that all the time, and they even have it to the point of, you know, anyone carrying a football in practice is fair game. Yep. You know, and if you punch it out, that person has to drop and give them some push-ups. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Davis up over the 30 to the 34-yard line. Good field position. You know, Craig Sager, we've been talking about that Missouri defense, and they get points for what they do. Yes, they do. The score is 41-24, but the points are adding up on their defensive production chart. The last three series alone, James Kinney gets five points for causing a fumble. Diedrich Harrington, five for recovering a fumble. The next series, Brian Smith, he gets three for a quarterback hit, five for causing a fumble, and then Zach Bill, seven for the interception. They play with passion, and they're also accountable. Good stuff, Craig. Penalty flag, not going anywhere. It's the clock nears five minutes to play in this ballgame. They've already made the announcement here. Do not run on the field. You'll be arrested. But we can see people leaving the hill on the left side. They're already getting ready to hit the field. Offense. Five yard penalty. <laughs> Security. 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 68,349. <laughs> there we go. I'm afraid he's I, a little outnumbered. I don't know how to break this to him. <laughs> yeah, really. But that, but, but that walkie-talkie is not going to be any help. He's going to need, he's going to need some reinforcements for this one. And you need Iowa State goalposts that can't come down. Lord's pass up in the air, incomplete, almost intercepted again. Davis had it in his hands and bobbled it. You know, going back to what Craig showed us with the production board, as Missouri almost gets another turnover and more production board points. Josh Davis unable to handle it, almost knocks it up in the air. See Kenny with a big hit, cause the incompletion. The production board, is, as Craig said, makes them accountable, shows their production on defense. On offense, they have the same thing, but the offensive coaches told the guys, don't worry about your grades this week, just go play. They were worried too much about it, worried about too many minuses on their grade sheet. They throw it out in the flat, and Missouri's defense is there again. Mark LaFleur, the receiver, but he is swarmed. Check out what's coming to TBS. One client all the way. Tom Cruise, Cuba Gooding Jr. I need to feel you, Jerry. Show me the money! Jerry Maguire, Sunday, 8 Eastern, on TBS Superstation. <laughs> right now, Missouri's showing Nebraska the victory with just 4.28 to play in a ball game. Do you know the human head weighs eight pounds, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> no, miss that one. You know only dogs and bees smell fear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. First half, Nebraska five of nine on third down, one of six tonight in the second half. Lord sets up the screen. Davis nowhere to go. Another tremendous play by James Kinney. Kenny's one of the co-captains of the team, and we talked with Gary Pinkle about leadership, and, is, and he, as most coaches will tell you, 
Your best leaders need to be your best players because it's hard to lead if you're not on the field making plays. He's asked for more leadership from James Kinney, but he also asked for more production. And obviously tonight, he has gotten that from number 24. Kyle Larson standing back at his 12-yard line, 325 to play. Nice driving kick into the win. Marcus James hitting at the 25, still on his feet, looking for some room. Gets up to about the 37-yard line. 45 yards on the kick, nine on the return. A.J. Ricker yesterday told us he had a feeling about this game. I got a, a weird feeling about this year, uh, you know, more than I had in the past. Uh, you know, they're going to come in here. I mean, they're a great team. They've, they've played some good teams so, so far. And it seems like we always play Nebraska pretty well. You know, I can even go back to before I was even here and the kick when they won that game. Uh, you look back, Nebraska normally plays, uh, you know, Missouri pretty tough. And I don't know, I just got a special feeling about this game this year. AJ, you're as good as our Saturday Swami, Craig Sager, in the cards. <laughs> Craig reading cards and tea leaves. AJ doing it with production. Straight ahead running, clock closing in on three minutes to play Zach Abram. You know, Gary Pinkle, when he took over, he talked about getting respect for this program. Four and seven, then five and seven. Could have gone to a bowl last year, except they got blown out by Kansas State. But the only way you get respect is by winning football games. Gary Pinkle will get respect tonight if this lead, and it should, hold up. But they'll go to five and one. Many people had kind of given up hope when they went to Kansas and lost and gave them their first loss of the year because everyone expected them to be 5-0 and oh when they played Nebraska after they beat Illinois in the first game mm -hmm. of the season because they thought the schedule set up for it. Now they started to all the gloom and doom kicked in. But look at this. Missouri has pulled the people back into their camp. Smith dumps it up to the 50 to Cissé. Still on his feet down to the 40-yard line. First down, Missouri. Craig Sager, what are they doing on the sidelines to get ready for this celebration? Yeah, it's not just the sidelines, Ron, but also over in the end zone where I am and where our camera's on top of the goalpost. They are literally going to lower the goalpost before the fans run on the field. Bob Stanley, the assistant athletic director for administration and facilities, called Donnie Duncan for the Big 12, got permission to lower the goalposts as soon as the game is over so that the kids won't time on the goalpost and get hurt. So they got a machine standing by right here. As soon as that gun goes off, the goalpost will come down. Now we already had one injury in college football because of the goalpost going down. You can't take any chances. Good call by the Big 12 and our good buddy Donnie Duncan. Left side, Abron running room inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Just a reminder to stick around for the Chick Quattro postgame report. Ernie and Brian Bosworth will catch you up on all of today's action, including Oklahoma, Texas, Miami, Florida State. That Ohio State-Wisconsin game, and of course, our game all coming up. We have 153. Hey, do, you see, do you see our guys going to get the camera off of the yeah. goalpost? That came, that came down. That was worthy of a NASCAR pit stop. That's right. The amount of time he went up there and, you know, <laughs> with the NASCAR on TNT, I mean, zoom, zoom, boom, that thing was down. That was pretty good. That's pretty good. 45 straight losses to top 10 teams for Missouri. Uh, they're going to keep it on the ground of the 30-yard line. Clock at 125. Stuart Bradley on the stop. Tough night for Nebraska. Let's see, let's see, young Daniel Bullock's number 14. And Bernard Thomas, number five, on the sideline. And, 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 and can you imagine the outpouring of emotion? Gary Pinkle has told us, right? I'm only concerned about the last few years here because that's all I've been here with with, with Missouri for playing Nebraska. I'm not concerned about the years in the past. You know something? I don't believe it. That's, that's right. what you tell your team, that's fine. But you, but the alumni have told you, it's time to beat Nebraska. All the old guard, everyone around campus. This is the opportunity for, as you said, Missouri to make a statement and announce to the Big 12 that they are a player in the, in the conference yet again. Gary Pinkle and his staff have arrived. The first major Big 12 win for him. Only had one losing season while head coach at Toledo. And just think, they may be going bowling this year. Final 17 seconds. They have to snap it one more time, and the losing streak to Nebraska will be over. Congratulations, Missouri Tigers. What a great game by Brad Smith of Missouri. 
fabulous game by their defense. Let's watch.